following podcast contains spoilers, strong language, Richard Grieco, and nudity. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey, look, your dick's on fire. <sighs> Major look. Four guys and a movie. Four guys and a movie. Don't I, Brian Robert, you're reviewing movies for the show. Four guys and a movie. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Four Guys and a Movie, the podcast about movie snacks and all things nerdy. My name is Rob, and welcome to our mukbang. I am joined by our dear, <laughs> dear Palicos. Palicos. Introduce oh, yourself. I am the science teacher. Okay. <laughs> Grandma. <laughs> Grandma. Sigus <laughs> Joe. <laughs> all right. Complete with goopy metal hand. Oh, my God. <laughs> And we, uh, this was an 80s thing, huh? Uh, or was it 90s? 91. 91. But it just, it stunk like an 80s thing, for sure. Uh, yeah, so If Looks Could Kill was on the docket. Um, just very quickly, has anybody else seen this movie before? I have. I've okay. Never no. I know I'd seen it. Now. Like, I remembered the, the whip thing mm -hmm. pretty, pretty well. I saw it at least four or five times. Yeah, uh, back when when I had HBO growing up. Okay, yeah, this is one of those that I think was on TV just all the time, kind of yeah. a deal. I don't know why I would continue watching it, but I did. <laughs> eh, you had a child's brain, mm -hmm. not like today. Um, does anybody have any information about this movie? I do. <laughs> okay. I have information regarding the budget and the box office. Would anyone like to make guesses for either? Oh. <sighs> um. Uh, the budge was like thirty million. I'm gonna say twenty million. I'll go high forty. The budge was fourteen million. Oh, wow. okay. Overshoot. Right. Now, would you like to guess of the box? I'm gonna stick with twenty million. Mm, I'll stick with thirty million. I'll stick with forty. It was seven point eight. <laughs> 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 Woo! Terribly played on all of our parts. Now, the somewhat disturbing thing <coughs> about this movie... Is that it's not, in fact, a remake of a classic Disney film? Well, I mean, there's that. Um, there were three nominations in 92 for Best Fantasy Film, Best Supporting Actress, and Best Director. For what? Never Ending Story? <laughs> <laughs> The 18th Three. Saturn Awards. Which actress? Like, it had to have been the lady Robin playing... Robin Bartlett. Is the, it, was uh, that the one playing the um, Ilsa Grunt? No. no. No, that was... I think that was the hot chick. That, like, the she should have won a Raspberry Award for her performance. Like, that <laughs> the, was fucking awful. The chick with no, the ear? No, actually, no. Robin Bartlett is currently age 72. So, yeah, that, that probably was... Well, I think the... I think... That must have been the French teacher then, because yeah. yeah, probably could be. Ilsa Grunt was like seventy-two she was 72 back then. Yeah, <laughs> seventy-two forever in our hearts. Wow, she looks a lot different now. So um, yeah, I mean, yeah, you it, know, it was forty the, plus years. Old, it? it was the Spanish teacher, French teacher, <laughs> French teacher. yeah, that one. <laughs> So this movie features a terrible plot where um, a villain is trying to like mint his own gold coins, which turns out were actually just like a thousand chocolate coins with gold foil <laughs> wrapping. But not the explosive kind. Not yeah, no, not the explosive kind. Mm. <sighs> and like I don't, I don't know when it stopped, but I'm pretty confident. There are no countries currently that actually have their monetary system based on precious metals or any other physical anything. Yeah, I mean, there are still gold reserves, but I don't think anyone's on the gold standard. <laughs> yeah, we're pretty much yeah. just making this shit up at oh, this point. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. It's just like, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. 50 trillion more. Numbers. We're fine. Right. We're fine. A couple other fun facts. I print my own gold. Yeah. There you go. Apparently, explosive chewing gum and x ray glasses. Uh, People saw that crap and were like, oh, we got to put this in uh, in our movie. Because apparently mm. the explosive gum was tried in uh, Mission Impossible. <clears throat> um, and then uh, in The World is Not Enough, one of the Bond movies had the x-ray glasses. 
Which I'm surprised there weren't any X-ray yeah. sunglasses before then, but <laughs> well, but, yeah. so, yeah, but that would have, that would have been the Mission Impossible TV show. <laughs> well, no, no, 19, uh, and, 1996. And was by X-ray the glasses, first Mission Impossible. Movie. We don't mean X like actual X-ray glasses. We mean no. It just lets you see <laughs> people naked. Yeah. Yeah. Nudie yeah. vision glasses. Yeah. yeah. Now like they're in introduced the to us though as X-ray specs. When did um, was it they live? The one where you would see the, the aliens. That was in the, like, 86. There, that was 80 yeah, something. So that's, yeah. that's kind of before the uh, X-ray glasses came yeah, but I mean, see, from this Did movie. you see the, the ordeal that uh, um, Roddy Piper had to go through to get one man to wear those glasses? Yeah, I mean. Yeah. He should have he just told Keith David, you'll see naked chicks. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. I mean, <laughs> technically you, you will. They'll just be horrible. Well, you know, you don't have to lead with that. Like that yeah. one winky guy. Mm-hmm. All right. but you, So you're saying that Mission Impossible was inspired by this film? Uh, at least for the explosive gum. Uh, I right. mean, oh. We did talk about it a little bit, but who perpetrated these acts of uh, <laughs> acting upon us? Well, uh, you got Richard Grieco as the titular character, Michael Corbin. Well, he's not a titular character, but the well, main character. He's a character. I think he is at this yeah. point. And you have uh, Linda Hunt as uh, Ilsa Grunt. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. Roger Reese as Augustus Starenko. And Robin Bartlett as uh, Miss Grober, the French teacher. Yeah. And Gabriel Anwar just stinking the joint up. As the romantic lead, who, I, as far as I can tell, is they don't even have a romance named Marishka. <clears throat> All right. I didn't think she was that bad. Yeah, Joe's obviously got feelings about this. I didn't think she was any worse than Richard Grieco. I mean, she Richard Grieco was bad, too. But that part where she's flailing against him. Oh, yeah. That's like. Just- like Absurd. the weakest monkey <laughs> smashes. <laughs> Joe, clearly you have not been flailed upon by women often enough. I mean, usually they don't feel the need to do that. Yeah. When around. Well, you know, like, John's got to announce his presence yeah. when he enters a neighborhood. So he needs to hear the lamentations. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. Maybe all I'm the just, moms come I'm right out of the house. Being too nice to them, and you know, get out of here. The only excuse that I could possibly imagine up for that performance, that particular scene. Was that she was like, let me just be as obnoxious as possible about, I am a damsel in distress now that I've met a man. Or no, well, the director she just didn't sucked, give a fuck. Yeah, I think she just sucked at acting. <laughs> yeah. But everyone else in this movie also sucked at acting. Oh, and we have a, a also special guest, uh, Roger Daltrey, lead singer of The Who's in this movie for like <laughs> for, five for minutes. Reasons. As Agent Blade. Agent Blade. Not even Agent, they just call him Blade the whole Blade, time. Yeah. Blade. He's just Blade. The Daywalker. Wesley Snipes, he is not. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I don't I mean, know. He there, might not pay his taxes. There was a phase of years in the early to mid '90s where Roger Daltrey popped up in a bunch of things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, this was like like around this time, Mick Jagger tried to be in a few movies too. Like he's in a uh, Free Jack. Yeah, I think and, um, uh, Gene Simmons was mm-hmm. in a couple of movies too. Like just interesting movie that never got made. But I would have loved to have seen the guy who got Dune, mm-hmm. the Dune script, before um, David Lynch. Was gonna have Mick Jagger play uh, Fade, hmm. um, Sting's hmm. part. Could that would have been that. pretty interesting. Hmm. Either way, um, that has nothing to do with this movie. Yeah, I've never actually seen. I've never seen uh, Mick Jagger act. I don't know what that. <laughs> I mean, would, it's, uh... it's exactly what you what you expect it <laughs> oh, to be. Okay. It's not... All right. Well. All right. <laughs> she just kind of shambles around on yeah. stage, <laughs> licks things. He opens his giant mouth and belches some lines out. <laughs> if looks could kill. <laughs> All right. So it's a it's a high school romp, I guess. It's uh, the class of Edsel High. Incel Red. High. Right? Edsel <laughs> or Incel. Uh, yeah. <laughs> With based on the content of the characters from it, we meet. It probably is. Incel yeah, high. they're pretty much <laughs> just. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah well not by the end that one kid he, he wins out of sheer persistence that's that's not that syndrome. <laughs> yeah yeah that's that's not, down. no i i i agree actually with brick on that one that it's that like white urkel which one's just not okay 
I'm going to open this. Yeah, okay. All right. Let's do this. Uh, <laughs> have me listeners at home. Cuban um, sandwich Lay's potato chips. Rob is attempting to launch himself at the snacks <laughs> and being restrained by his belly hitting the table. <laughs> We've nail, all been there. I told these chips I'm going to nail your ass to the wall. <laughs> all right. Before I get going, let me try the Cuban sandwich flavored Lay's. Oh, oh that does not look good in that bag. There's this one that has this mouth. big black mark and another one. Put it in your motherfucking green. mouth. I mean, fat chat for life. I'm going to put it in there. Well, I wasn't trying to start a whole uh, thing here. I just wanted the chips. Yeah, you know, that ain't bad. Well, no, it's, I mean, it's, it's Cuban. It can't it's be It's very, bad. like, light. <laughs> I mean, it, it tastes like a ham and cheese. Hmm. It do. It do. Wow. It's That's like scary. it shouldn't taste like that, yeah, but yeah. it does. Yeah, if you no, have a hankering just, for just does it. ham and cheese sandwich. Mm. A Cubano, as they say. Mm. In ethnic areas. All right. This movie starts off at, Ed, at Incel High. Mm-hmm. Class of like 30 people's graduating. Val Victorian's giving some speech. This is great. Richard Geek Richard Geeko. Geeko. <laughs> yeah, Richard Greco <laughs> glides in Geico. here. He's listening to headphones. He's like just disrespecting the whole ceremony. And we're like, that's our main character. We're supposed to like this dude. Nah. Talking to his horrible friend whose name I never caught. Horrible and friend. T- we'll just call him Tits. Tits, yeah. <laughs> and then he goes to get his diploma. His parents are like, yay. He gets his diploma and he just gets a fucking like incomplete slip with it. Does that happen? Is I don't that think that's how that works. Ever happened? No. But that is how it should work. That actually, that is true. How great you get would up that on be? Like, on get... camera and everything. Just... I knew somebody in high school who was a super senior. Mm-hmm. And he was like, I think, I think I'm going to graduate this year. So, at least in my experience, they will actually hold you back and you won't be like, yeah, by the way, you got to. You gotta go to France. You it's just you just unroll the paper. It just says no in nope. huge block letters. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, oh, that'd be great. <laughs> I mean, the only other thing I could use on that is the like the UHF guy, like yo, so stupid. <laughs> that is the thing. Like someone on stage should like publicly call them out and shame. Oh yeah, yeah. And it's the only real motivator. <laughs> shame. Just... I mean, everyone will be so into that ceremony. Oh, yeah. <laughs> be placing bets. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, was... Well, what if you had like an idiocracy kind of thing where it's like... What you if didn't... you got that potato chip out of your mustache? <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, holy shit. crap. All right, you're good. All right. <laughs> that, was, that's um, a big one. that was a whole chip. So, I thought it was a booger. <laughs> <laughs> what if uh, it was like um, an idiocracy thing where you didn't pass enough of your classes to get your your diploma but you can fight to the death to get one mm. so you got a choice you could stay back you could just not graduate or you could fight to death you join mm. the arena so that's yeah. like the after show is like everyone who didn't make it mm-hmm. now mm-hmm. they're gonna have to do what they have to do to get the, the yeah. degree there's one more degree mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> we're gonna decide who gets it <laughs> trial by combat <laughs> Um, it would be cool if there was like an elimination match where you had to fight the valedict- valedictorian for your, your right to graduate. But here's one thing I'm thinking though: um, you look at Richard Greco, you're like, you are not, you're not 18, you're not 19, you're like 30. Yeah, like <laughs> you, this ain't your first time repeating a grade. No. Like you shouldn't really be that I mean, disappointed. Yeah, gr- <laughs> granted, there there were those guys at West Haven High yeah. School. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, would, they would have had to get into the Coliseum. Yeah, this doesn't look like your first rodeo here. Oh, just, <laughs> they just right. passed people because they're, they're like, get him out of here. Yeah, eventually, tired of we're you. tired of him. Yeah, yeah he ain't going to do this. <laughs> Give him his fucking diploma. Get him out. I'm tired nah. of looking at you. So, congratulations now, on your new job repairing heating and air conditioning. He he goes to. Uh, he it's still, actually a pretty st- still makes more money than I, I do. I meant no degree, offense by that yeah. at all. I, um, I'm either actually quite jealous. So, <laughs> either way, he goes home, and like mom's like, "Oh, it's okay. We'll just call Miss Grober, the French teacher." And, uh, and his dad's like, "You fucked up. <laughs> you didn't follow through. <laughs> you know, you're gonna be pumping your other brother's." Gas while he's driving. Oh, let's talk about, yeah, let's talk about the little brother. Let's talk about the little brother who mm. looks older than Richard Greco somehow, mm. but in the body of a of a 
You think it's like a, like an Andy Melanakis yeah. kind of situation? Yeah, my my note was middle aged little bro named Brad. Yeah, I had forty mm. year old kid in my notes. Yeah, yeah. I think if your name's Brad, you never really are a child. I think you come out of the womb like I get, already. I guess he looked like just a little adult. He looked like the host of a late show. Mm-hmm. I forget which car it was that they were talking about, but it's like you're going to be filling up the gas for your brother's something something. It's He's like, like he looked kind of like Andy from the Conan. And it's he like, does, yeah, he looked a okay, little bit. Okay, I like... actually hate that kid more than the main mm-hmm. character. Either way, like the only alternative he has is for his dad to, and mom to pay to send him to France well, to get his French, French club is, credit. You know, going to summer school mm-hmm. in France. So. Who goes to summer school in France? Movie people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess the same. The same. The people French that club. In you know, Cell High. Put failures well, the French in club. Era. I thought they, because there was a French club trip in yeah. my high school, but I didn't. Yeah, but that was during the so school year. What would what That's would really what I, happen yeah. though is it would be like, okay, you have to go to summer school. Your French teacher's not going to be there. She's left you like fifty dittos, mm-hmm. and like one of the gym teachers with his sack bulging out his tiny shorts <laughs> is going to physically prevent you from leaving until you complete them all. And also, and is, it's he will in fact Im- invoke physical violence. Yeah, you. <laughs> and isn't the girl that's there with them the valedictorian? Yep. Yeah. So it's not summer school because nope. those nope. those people all graduated. graduated. Yeah. No, it was just. A trip for French club. A mm-hmm. post-graduation trip. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think in my high school, the band actually did that. Yeah. They would go and, like, perform places, but it would be yeah. an excuse to go to, like, the Bahamas or something. Yeah. Matt, Matt went to Hawaii. That's right, yeah. Um, so, we cut to somewhere in Europe. It's a big, like, chateau. There's, like, some random government figure there. And our bad guy, Augustus Starenko, is there just hamming it up. And the guy's like, yeah, you know, I'm not going to put all of my country's gold in this one building. Um, <laughs> because and, I legally can. Yeah, I'm like, I don't but. know how, why you think I'm capable of that. And Augustus is like, I tire of you. And he has this, like, <laughs> it's like a one part Hitler, one part, <laughs> like, zombie. Yeah, I don't know what, I think his name, it's Ziggesfeld or Ziggesbar or something. <laughs> And um, he has superhuman strength for like no reason. Um, <laughs> you know, he he looked like to me. He looked like a cross between. Um, oh God! What's the actor that played Matlock? Uh, Andy, Andy Griffith. Griffin. Andy Gri- He looked like a cross to me between Andy Griffith and um, the creepy dude from like uh, Donnie Darko. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, what is? It? I can't remember his name now. Either. Is that Jared Leto? No. Uh, with the wait, tall wasn't Jake Gyllenhaal? In Jake Gyllenhaal, Gyllenhaal, that's Parker? right. Yeah, maybe I'm it was Gyllenhaal. Cross with the tall man from Phantasm. <laughs> Either way, <laughs> this guy just beans this this European government official in the face with a serving tray. And that like, tray is diesel. Fusro does him across the room, and I think he I think it implies that he breaks his neck on impact with the wall. Right. Um, but how does that somehow transport the money to them? Like, how does that solve their well, problem? He's, out of at all. he's just mad because, like, the French gold isn't going to be there now. Mm-hmm. I guess. Okay. Well, then his his entire plan is is foiled. Well, he still right has there. a whole bunch of other countries' gold. I guess. Um, you can ha- totally have a united Europe without France, right? I, I guess. <laughs> totally. Um. So. You get Brexit all up in this bitch. We cut to. Uh, a snowman that has <laughs> two security cameras for its eyes. Real and that subtle. spies a Roger Daltrey sneaking around the compound. <laughs> and he fucking decks this snowman, snowman <laughs> right in the face. <laughs> Spark shoot out. Um, you do get a cool shot of like him punching it. And then I guess <laughs> he's he's running away because they deploy like the goons on the quads. And like the first guy. Uh, what did he, he hid in front of a stump and then jumped out of the way and the guy exploded? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then the second guy, which I think is, is Ziggesfeld, um, like he does something where he has like a Zippo lighter oh, yeah. that has connecting wires. That's a bomb. Yeah. It's like a, it's a, it a like James a Bond bomb. slash Batman 
reject device. Like both of those people <laughs> rejected it and it ended yeah. up in this movie. Yeah. Crispin Glover, that's what I was thinking. Oh yeah, no, oh, he's okay. very Crispin Glover. Not Donnie Dark either. Yeah. You know, okay, yeah. That's that's the one of the early rats. McFly. Um <laughs> George McFly. So um this guy ends up like his hands caught in the quad and it's dragging him away. And I, I guess that's how Ziggsfeld oh, gets that his the bionic origin hand. Story? I think. Yeah, I did not I didn't realize that that was yeah, him. His okay. arm got ripped off by the huh. snowmobile or whatever it was. I didn't put that together. Yeah. Huh. So because I thought this was taking place like at the same time. Yeah, I thought so too. Well, he just had that hand ready to go. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. yeah, they put that on him too they, sweet. They took him to Wakanda. <laughs> yeah. And they they popped it on real quick. So, I mean, another fair, broken white boy. Yeah. I'm already thinking of. They put a magic can, ball on him. I can augment replacement parts when I have to have like a new. Well, you'd be thinking about or... that while the quad's dragging you along. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, Maybe. I can't wait till this rips my hand yeah. off. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to learn how to jerk off all over again. <laughs> yeah. So, new meaning to the word stranger, though. Mm. This guy, he like crashes through the window. He's got ten different vibration settings. He somehow <laughs> knows right where Starenko is in the compound. Crashes right. through the window, whips the whole snowsuit off. It's fucking Roger Daltrey. And there's this one like scary old woman. Um, her name's Ilsa Grunt. But you don't know that because it doesn't mention her name till like. But you do know that because she looks like an Ilsa Grunt. Well, yeah. I mean, once they say it, you're like, oh, of course. Yeah. Like, yeah. What else could her name be? <laughs> Whatever the female gremlin's name is, yeah. I assume it's the same. She's like four foot eight. Yeah, she looks like a piece of bacon sliced off of like, Danny DeVito's back. Like you look like with a running start, you could kick this woman and she'll leave the ground. Yeah. But at the same time, you're like, I don't want to fuck with her no. at all. No, no. Um, she is, she'll take part of your leg with you, with her when you do so. It's like a honey badger right there, like tenacious with a capital T. Like, a, like one of the goblins from Lord mm -hmm. of the Rings. <laughs> Teeth going like, in all different directions. Yeah, you're like, I could probably kill that, but I don't want like <laughs> whatever's going to happen to me in the process of doing that to happen. <laughs> so she's just like, I ain't afraid of Roger Daltrey. Just grabs her necklace, which is a fucking like metal whip grout thing. Magical just whip. Whips the shit out of him. He cuts him up, chokes him out. Just just beats his ass. I would refer to this necklace as like the magical prehensile whip. Because mm -hmm. it's just ridiculously long and has no, and super no reason for being that long. It was also manufactured in Wakanda. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. She Maybe? stole it from Wakanda. That's Maybe right. that's like part of Starenko's plan. Like he's got like some sort of gold for vibranium trade. Uh, oh, you think that's it? Or he's something he's like trying that. to build another Ultron. Mm. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> gold, Make more sense than this fucking Gold plot. plated vibranium. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. So thanks for coming, Roger Daltrey. You're out of here. Yep. Um, Don't worry. You'll get first billing in the credits. And now we cut to, I'm guessing, is MI6? Some sort of British intelligence agency. And they're in MI sucks. These people yeah. are the worst. They're investigating the deaths of like four or five finance ministers from around Europe. And they're like, that's not something that you do in like a clandestine like secret agent room. Like that would be all over the press. Yeah. That would be a huge international problem. Yeah. And it would also be like, where did these people go? We don't yeah. just send the finance minister off on his own yeah, to like some spooky chateau somewhere. They, they all meet with this person and then are never seen again. <laughs> so it's obviously weird. that's the person we have to protect. Yeah, he must be the next target. Mm -hmm. And it's okay that he had, seems to have his own private military. Sure. Well, I mean, that is... He needs to protect himself. That is a thing it. that happens. Like... Mm -hmm. That's how the Wagner group exists. There are some evil-ass Russian oligarch who's like, I need my own private army. But Pergosian did it with style, because he was like, he went from prison to caterer to mercenary warlord. It just like that crazy three-step plan. Uh, I guess if you want to call that style. <laughs> <laughs> so is anybody anyway. else's tongue get, feeling kind of burning after these chips, or no. just me? No, I'm, I'm feeling all right. Okay. I'm, I'm liking them. So anyway, um... <clears throat> All right, so the plan is they're like, well, Blade was our best guy. Um, James Bond, we don't have, we can't get through that trademark. Mm -hmm. uh, Ian Fleming will not allow it. So um, 
I guess we'll go. Whoever America's got, they got this guy. Uh, Flemmy Ian. That nobody knows. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no one knows what this guy looks like, He's including the Americans. Deep cover sleeper agent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that somehow magically got hired sometime. Played by the by Rock. Someone. And we don't we don't have a photo of this man <laughs> or a, any form of biometrics. We know nothing okay. about this person. You yeah. know they're gonna remake. We don't this even movie. know it's a man. Mm-hmm. They are going to remake this movie. Well, it's gonna be the Rock, and it's gonna be Kevin Hart playing. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, what's his face? His character. They could at least have the decency to get the roles wrong so that, like, Kevin Hart's the badass guy. and um, <laughs> That would be cool. The, yeah. the, <laughs> the Rock's like, the Rock is graduating from high, high school. school. <laughs> <laughs> He'd be about as believable. <laughs> so anyway, um, what the hell is even happening? Oh, yeah. Okay. So they're like, we got to protect Augustus Storenko. We got this American agent. No one knows what he looks like. We don't have any information to verify who he is. Mm-hmm. We only know he's called Michael Corbin. And this American dude here goes by the code name Mother. Nothing can go wrong here. Yeah, well, yeah, definitely not. What could go wrong with those code names? I'm pretty sure kids would come up with a better plan than they did. Yeah. I'm pretty sure was, kids came up with this plan. <laughs> this one, like, snooty guy's like, well, we know something. We know he's male because he said that. And he's just like, shut up, Kelly. (laughs) like, that got a laugh out of me. (laughs) You're canceled. Shut up, Wesley. Interestingly enough, I didn't realize till the second time through, that's the dude that gets thrown out of the bus by Sigis Fall later. Oh, it's me, Kelly. (laughs) So, um, all right. At this point, I realize, I'm like, wait a minute. Michael Corbin's the name of our main character. What a wacky coincidence. At this point, I realized I immediately feel ripped off. the coincidence mm-hmm. and was like, this is going to be fucking stupid. All right. <laughs> I don't know what I was expecting. Yeah. We uh, need to devote a little podcast time to this. What? There's a can. There's a, a just a Pringles can labeled Doritos. Doritos yeah. Minis. Mini Doritos. And what it looks like, like I was expecting some sort of Pringle shaped Doritos stacked mm. neatly. Me too. Uh, it looks like someone just took a pile of Doritos <laughs> and jammed it in the can. Yeah. And just however they broke, they broke. It's just the bits you get at the oh, bottom of the bag of those Doritos. Are, no, those are all the little mini Doritos that are in like, the munchies mix. Yeah. Even still, the entire point behind um, Pringles is they put them in a cardboard tube to protect them during mm-hmm. transport so uh, they weren't broken. Yep. These are. It's so they pop, Brick. Yeah. <clears throat> Pringles go pop. pop. And so that you can't stop. Oh. Which I guess I haven't stopped yet, but still. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's still Doritos. <laughs> it's just Despite like all, all our complaints, it's going to... Add a little Dorito chunk to get at the bottom of a bag of Doritos. All right. So now, uh, we see, Michael Corbin shows up at the, the airport, and he's like... Which all one? Right, <laughs> check it out. Well, we're going to... He's talking to his, his geek friend who's... We don't know yet is very rapey. Um, <laughs> he's talking to him and he's like, okay, here's the deal. We're going to go like, we're going to do this French club thing by day. By night, we're going to get all the French chicks. Don't worry about Mrs. Grober. I'll handle I her. I believe it was a French babe safari. French mm-hmm. babe safari, yes. Because if I, one thing I know about French ladies, they love retarded Americans. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so... Mrs. Grober, meanwhile, she just pops right into the film, and you're like, oh, damn. And she's like, I'm going to be on your ass, and you fucking, you know, you're going to be sitting next to me on the plane, you're going to be sitting next to me on the bus. Now, question. Mm. This is a theory that John and I had that never came to fruition. Mm. Did either of you think that at some point Mrs. Grover was going to get, like, sexy? Um, That's a distinct mm. possibility. I didn't think that, but I can see why you would. I mean... It's not out of the cards for a movie like this to yeah. do like a Jamie Lee Curtis kind of move. Yeah, I thought at some point they were going to let her hair down. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, like yeah. she was going to fall in love she, with this guy. Or mm-hmm. Yeah, she was either either going to be the, the dangerous liaison uh, with Richard Grieco or... Uh, or just turn out to be a freak. <laughs> well, the, yeah, that would be a freak. Um, or have to go undercover as sexy lady. Mm-hmm. Instead, we get something completely different, but ultimately, I think, more satisfying. Mm-hmm. I feel like so, if they did go that route, it would have actually produced a more interesting plot. So, I mean, there's a lot of routes that could have produced yeah. more interesting yeah, plots. Yeah, it's not hard. <laughs> so, okay. Um, basically, this other agent shows up. Who, he's the actual secret agent. And he's, there's a phone call for Michael Corbin. He's like, let me go take that. 
in the uh you know the lounge or whatever first and class lounge first class lounge yeah so he goes in there there's a woman vacuuming you're like that woman's awful tiny mm-hmm. but um, but most mexicans are yeah. oh. Oh. but then uh, oh eat your doritos there we go. I They're too it. small. <laughs> they, they like the, the, like the tiny Mexican woman. They don't fill up his mouth enough. <laughs> All right. So, um, yeah. So he gets the call, and it's it's Michael Corbin's mother, not like the handler mother, like his actual mom. So of course he's like, this can't just be somebody else named Michael Corbin's no. mom. This has to be my boss. Because no one else in the universe could possibly have a fairly normal sounding name. Mm-hmm. Um, and then while he's still trying to figure out what that call meant, you see the vacuum, somebody has just let it run and pulled the hose off of it. So it's just flailing around, mm. um, which was actually fairly smart to drown out the silenced gun and, you know, the noise of Ilsa Grunt sneaking about. And she shoots him, puts him in the... Uh, my comment was stupid spy weapons vacuum, mm-hmm. <laughs> vacuum yeah, that, gun. That is true, actually, because that, like, the weapon appeared to, like, burn him from the inside. Hmm. Uh, yeah, it was it was almost like a like a gyrojet gun that fires yeah. little, little rockets, but mm. out of a vacuum cleaner hose, <laughs> um, which was... So like a Goss gun. <laughs> um, so the, uh, well, it goes from suck to blow. <laughs> yeah. So All right. now she, the uh, Ilsa here, she's got him in like the food and beverage cart and like this other stewardess, because she, she now, now she's in a stewardess disguise. This other stewardess is like, you clearly are working with me, even though I've never seen you before. Um, dispose of that body in the incinerator and then, well, she doesn't say that, but you know, dispose mm-hmm. of that cart in the incinerator and then get on the plane with me. And then um, meanwhile, uh, Michael Corbin finds out you know, the Richard Grieco, he finds out that he uh, is getting a first class plane ticket and uh, away he goes on this caper. Um, Magically gets a first class ticket. No yep. possible like they don't even check for ID. I remember that. Yep. He was he was about to give the well, ID. No, he had his passport and it did say Michael Corbin. Yeah, but there was no photo. Yeah. <laughs> um. Well, no, it's a passport. It had it had, should have a photo. She didn't check it because mm. it clearly wasn't him. <laughs> right, but the name on the ticket was Michael Corbin. Mm-hmm. The name on his passport's Michael Corbin. This is pre 9 11. They'll yeah, let you do yeah. whatever on the plane. Yeah, no, actually, what you're saying. Uh, you know, whose hair is that, guys? Yeah, that's, that's probably, oh, and it's probably one of my There was a years. switch of stewardesses. Yes. I better mm-hmm. come off the face. The one that the she went on actual break. Michael Corbin was talking to saw all the high school students. Head their I'm way. Here. She was like, I'm going on break. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't think that's how that so, works yeah. either. But so Fuck there was this shit, I'm out. Flim flam. So, um, turns out there's a secret operative on the plane who is not secret at all. Like, no. if you just looked at people on the plane, you'd be like, that man is the special <laughs> agent. Either way. Um, he is the flight marshal. Mm-hmm. Why, why do you say that, though? Because he looks like a secret agent. He doesn't act like one. Takes the but, new but he, Yeah, he looks like No one. problems, no questions. So, all right, we get the obligatory, I'm flying first class, you're flying um, business coach. class or coach uh, montage. Um, and then... I don't the, think first class has that much elegance to it. I mean, it has like some nice things, That's like but a private not, jet kind of thing. Yeah, well, and, they like, don't have the surf and turf, uh-huh. like lobster steak. They had like lounge chairs. Yeah. The the first some planes do have really nice first class. Oh. Um, I mean that's international chairs. late eighties, early nineties first class. Um, mm-hmm. The decade of decadence. Yeah, mm-hmm. like absolute excess. Um they were probably purchasing things off of Sky Mall at that time. Sky Mall. So, there would have been like if it was two years earlier. There would have been a guy just doing a line of coke, like right on the <laughs> Yeah, off of that. No, the stewardess would have brought it. Off the stewardess's yeah. boobs. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like, there's a button you could hit to have the stewardess come and, like, just do that. Present her boobs for yeah. crack. <laughs> so, all right. Well, now, this. These this, are already difficult to get out of here. I hate you, Doritos minis. <laughs> <laughs> so, this agent guy that's supposed to protect Corbin, he's. Um, crap. 
Should we call it? He's listening in on a conversation with his like drink <laughs> umbrella, fucking umbrella, directional microphone. Like yep. Um, and he hears that uh, Michael Corbin's concerned because the French teacher, you know, is she's trying to get him out of first class. Mm. And so he's telling the stewardess, like, yeah, this uh I think she this knows woman, she she thinks she knows me, but I think she thinks she knows me, but doesn't know me. I think you think shink shink. Thank you, think shink. Yeah. Shink, think shink. So Agent Man is like, oh hell no. And he just grabs her and throws her in the bathroom and like just uh you know, yells at her. Draws uh, a gun on her. Draws a gun on her, that's right. Um, because he will paint the plane with her brains. Mm-hmm. It and, and shows her his qualifications to be able to yeah, do that. Yeah, I am licensed to do this to yeah. you. Because, um, you know, that that might not be a counter yeah. agent at all. You so then, want to uh, re- reveal your position to. Poor, poor Grover, because it gets even worse. Because then he leaves, convinced he's scared the crap out of her. And then um, she comes out of the bathroom and tries to report this to the stewardess, which happens to be Ilsa. Who just shoves her back in the bathroom and slaps the shit out of her. <laughs> Fudge off. Fuck. Double slap. Just, now, like, Grover sitting down is at, like, face level with, <laughs> with Elsa. She just laces into her. Which I don't understand because she's mm-hmm. just like, get yourself together. And it's like, did you think that she's working with you? Just like the other stewardess. Well, y- you were working with her? Like, why are you... I'm not. Not just stuffing her in a toilet. I, I have no idea. She, she won't fit out. I think she out. just wanted her to shut up mm. while I, she figured out what she was going to do with her. Yeah, no. I think the chimpanzee writing this movie was just <laughs> saying, <laughs> <laughs> So. He had a bunch of keys that just happened to be what came out. It's them. <laughs> so this secret agent man, then he goes and he pins like some golden wings on uh, Corbin's jacket while he's sleeping. And um, he then goes back to his chair where and dies. Yeah, where Ilsa <laughs> gives him a poison drink and he dies. Fucking dumbass. Um, Grover spends the rest of the flight to France. So, locked in the bathroom. Locked in the bathroom, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we get to see um, the difference in first class and uh, coach. We see like Michael Corbin is given the choice between lobster and steak. And or uh, both. yeah, or both. <laughs> And meanwhile, in coach, uh, Ilsa just throws a tray of frozen dinner down and uh, in front of the the geeky guy. And he's like, what's this? And he's like, food. <laughs> and, and since it's the 80s, the stewardess is coming down like, uh, head or hand job, head or hand job. <laughs> both. Oh, OK. <laughs> yeah. um, I can't do both at the same time, silly. What would you like now? And I'll come back. <laughs> um. I mean, if you got enough. Yeah, depending on the <laughs> length involved. So either way, um, the yeah, plane... Not, not while the seatbelt light is on. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that, not while the fastened seatbelt light is on. So the plane lands. Um, <laughs> stewardess finds out that the agent guy's dead. She screams. Corbin runs from the plane. Um, Grober and Ilsa are both trying to get him. Uh, he just... First class, he's like, hey, stewardess, can you just make a baggage avalanche to block my way? <laughs> She's like, no problem. Sure. And, um, yeah, he runs out where he runs into this British guy who grabs him. And now, you know, Michael here, he thinks that he's getting arrested or something. Um, and then Miss Grober runs out and is like, Michael, you get back here. And this British guy that grabbed him fucking pulls out like this giant <laughs> ass. British <laughs> intelligence agent. Yeah. Just this giant hand cannon. And Harry Callahan. Yeah. Lays waste to Grover's luggage. (laughs) Everyone drops to the ground. Super subtle. Mm -hmm. Fuck your unmentionables, bitch. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Gets out of there, and um, they go driving off in a car. And um, Michael's like, what the fuck? I believe at some point during this run through the airport, they're like, they already know you're here. It's like, no shit they know you're here. None of you have even the slightest idea how to spell the word subtle. Mm-hmm. John, speaking of subtle, would you hand me a Casbar, please? Casbar. Casbar. I don't Rock know. the Casbar. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For real, I don't like it. So we see Ziggas Bird or Ziggas Fark or whatever his name is. The now winter, he has, winter Soldier. Yeah, he has a <laughs> robot hand and he goes driving after... Corbin and this uh, British dude. Um, and Corbin is taken to a secret agent base 
somewhere in Paris. Um, it's so romantic, though. So we're told. It really is a city of love. <clears throat> Pardon me while I ram chips in my mouth. I was like fudge in here. Yeah, baby. Sorry, like three of the four <laughs> podcast members are currently just <laughs> shoving some kind of dessert in their face. John Vamp. <laughs> well, I mean, keep us afloat, man. We need food to like. Yeah, please. To cope for the, for the endorphins. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the our endorphins. feelings mm-hmm. about this movie so, <laughs> and just life in general. Yeah. So the first room you go into in the secret agent base is the room where they test all the high tech gear. You have to walk through that to go anywhere else. R and D is the first level mm-hmm. you go through. Where they fire the flamethrowers and set off the bombs. And it it looks like it's in a freaking concrete parking garage. But... Mm-hmm. Probably because it is. <laughs> it's probably filmed in a parking garage. And it is just like, oh, this guy shoots flames and this guy shoots squibs. And then we just kind of repeat that over and over. He's wearing a bomb-proof suit. Yeah. This, that guy was the director. <laughs> and he's holding a bomb. That guy was yeah. the director? Yeah. Wow, oh, oh, I wish okay. I could have run in there and taken his suit away. <laughs> It's just like a cartoon where you run by and you're like, yo, suddenly he's not wearing clothes anymore. Yeah, and then just, the bomb goes yeah. off. He can still wear the helmet, but not the suit. Um, but then we see this one guy is like having a business meeting with a mannequin. And he's like, hold on, let me answer this phone call. And the whole front of his desk fucking whips around and smashes this thing's head. It's like, Jesus. <laughs> like, just imagine if you had a desk. That was continuously under that much tension. <laughs> and you just, one day you're just doing some work and you accidentally hit that button and just fire everything on your workstation across the room. You get a bead from your, you get a bead yeah. from your secretary and you get in a very important call. <laughs> Kaboom. Oh God, it's my wife. I gotta take this. All right. Um, Like, part of me wonders how potentially realistic this is. Given the things that we've heard leaked to the public Mm -hmm. that people have actually considered in intelligence circles. I'm sure somebody built the killer desk, but I think they they probably realized, like, wait a minute, that thing has to be stored like that. Yeah. Also, like, what happens if you just get a call in the middle of a meeting? Also, how are you going to convince someone that's opposite you that it's cool just cool for you to take a phone call if you're in like <laughs> oh yeah you're holding a gun to my head oh i really need to get this well, they're not gonna care when their cranium implodes from the <laughs> desk it's true it. <laughs> oh clunky but they might oh. shoot you before you pick up that phone yeah. <laughs> so either way um all right now we we meet uh miss Halt or whatever her name is. She's like Q in this movie. Mm. She's made some uh. gadgets for him. He gets some X-ray sun. No, I'm sorry, nudie vision sunglasses. They say are X-ray. Uh, he gets chewable plastic explosive gum. As soon as she hands those glasses to him, she immediately stands behind a lead. Well, she's so not stupid. stupid. Yeah, but like, it's so freaking cheesy. Mm-hmm. But then the next guy. Pervy McMagnum. Oh, yeah. You're such, it's a, like, give you're me such those. a boy. Yeah, I'm, do you know why? Because they fucked already. Oh, mm. wow. Well, yeah. You know they did. So, um... Or, or, she's just giving them the, you know, it's cool, man. Let's <laughs> do it. fuck later. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> We've so, been working together a while. You haven't made a move. Uh, let's do this. Now. I've seen and heard a lot of explosions. Now it's my turn. That's right. <laughs> I need to explode this bed <laughs> while doing a weird She-Hulk twerk. Shoot me with your rocket mm-hmm. launcher. That's right. <laughs> Now, I don't Lots need this MI6. movie to explain a lot to me, but uh, I really want to know how suction cup Reeboks work. They don't. They don't. Because, <laughs> like, all right, I, I, I'm willing to buy, you got the suction cups in the bottom, mm-hmm. you put that on the wall, it mm-hmm. sucks the air out, you're stuck to the wall. Mm-hmm. How are you triggering that? Are you just like, now your just feet are just stuck to the wall. No, so here's what you have to do. All right, you put the shoes on, mm-hmm. all right? Then you go to every part of the wall that you want to stick to. You yep. have to wipe it clean with an alcohol <laughs> pad to make sure there's no dirt or debris. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, then you can, yeah. Then I assume there's probably a button on the back of the shoe that mm-hmm. releases the suction. The re- like Reebok pumps. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So you have to you have to have the core strength to just. Correct. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. Or, <laughs> or do the sit and reach essentially and hit it. Yeah. You got to do a sit up every time because you got to wipe the area in front yeah. of you with the alcohol pad. 
<laughs> and you just moonwalk your way. Yeah. Also, who puts your ankles back together after you're done <laughs> using those? Because, <laughs> like, yeah, this, there's no way your ankles surviving a walking series. Down the wall. Yes, a series of painful rehabilitation surgeries. <laughs> this this is actually like a real device that they are trying to develop, but it's not a shoe. No. It's a thing that maybe you put your feet in and there's a yeah. right angle somewhere. Well, it's but yeah. like the handholds. I've seen it as they like de- they designed it based on I think it was a uh, a chameleon's gecko. Um, a gecko's palms. Mm-hmm. The one the I've seen things. like your feet are basically in like a stirrup and then your knees kind of have the the suction device mm-hmm. which would make sense and then yeah, yeah your hands have like the a button for the hands and then a button for the feet to like suck and stop sucking stirrups, and blow. stirrups and suction yeah, but the thing is yep. it's not sexy when you're doing that no richard grieco mm. needs to say sexy oh it's sexy when he's allegedly stuck to the wall later in the movie yes either way um then he's like yo i'm not a cia guy i'm just some teenager alleged teenager <laughs> From Incel High, and they're like, "Well, here's your car." And he's like, "Oh, no. first they're like, we've we've met the the agents from America. They brainwashed them so they can't de- deny that's their right, own yeah. cover." Mm-hmm. It's like, so not only just, <laughs> did we not check who this person was, <laughs> but we assumed that he's incapable of telling us. Yeah, <laughs> it's and it's not so much the brainwashing in this the CIA. It's more just the American education system. Mm-hmm. It's so. <laughs> Fucking stupid! This guy literally doesn't know who he is or where he is no idea. at any point in time. So, Brian, we miss you. You would be able to tell us what kind of car this is. Yeah, I would love uh, to know. They get he um, gets the Inspector Gadget car. Yeah, it he is gets the Inspector. It gadget is car. the. I would like. But I would red. like to classify it as the most affordable European sports car. Mm. That you um, can get for what was the budget again? Eighteen. <laughs> it was what did you say? Fourteen. Yeah, it was, it was like fifteen or something mm-hmm. like yeah, that. Yeah, because uh, it was. There are some very sexy European sports cars. Mm-hmm. This was not one. This was not one. It was it was rather uh, boxy and kind of a. Uh, well, I mean, you gotta have to gotta put the rocket launcher somewhere, and I feel like this was like. At least it didn't drive up the wall. If if yeah. if Lamborghini or Ferrari designed uh, the equivalent of a Toyota Tercel, <laughs> that's what this car is. So like it could have, they could have even done like well I don't know maybe maybe they got in trouble with James Bond so they could have done like an Aston Martin that would have been cool like there are sexy cars that just mm-hmm. was like it's like here's your car it was red we put rocket launchers on a Cavalier <laughs> enjoy. <laughs> Uh, yeah, okay, it wasn't that bad, but, like, it just wasn't... I love the Saturday Night Live commercial for the Chameleon, where it's, like, this fancy luxury car, but if you look at it from the outside, it's, like, this rusted shitbox with, like, <laughs> holes in it and everything. The car like... was, according to Google, the Lotus Esprit. Oh, really? Car manufactured in the United Kingdom. Huh. Well, so... I wonder it looked dopey. Um... Oh. Because so, some of those look really nice. Like there are some Lotus that look really cool. Sorry. Once he uh he they are like, here's your car. It's got a tuxedo scuba gear and camouflage in it and a thousand francs in a glove box. He's like, all right, cool. See ya. He just takes it and drives <laughs> off. Um, and most unsubtly. Yeah, even yeah. an older one would have looked nicer. So, meanwhile, while this is happening, Miss Grober, the French teacher, um, some. In an attempt to call the American embassy, which shouldn't be that hard in Paris, yep, <laughs> like somehow gets put in touch of like mission command here, <laughs> where she's talking to actual mother, like, and she's just like, "I'm the French teacher," and they're like, "The French teacher? That has to be some kind of operative." Mm-hmm. Sure, that's totally a code name. Yeah, let's fucking let's get this person, and um, you're like, "Oh, what another wacky mix-up." That's right. I want that information. Somebody bing that. You know, interesting plot hmm. concept just occurred to me. What if you put... <laughs> that didn't happen you, in this movie. You better hurry up. <laughs> I'm starting to feel these two margaritas I've had. <laughs> what if you put LARPers in charge of an intelligence a- agency? Uh, have you not seen, seen the, the world right yeah. now? <laughs> well... There's that. It does feel like the LARPers are in charge of everything right now. <laughs> yeah. um, 
They're LARPing it right into the dirt, man. <laughs> All right, so here's, here's a terribly uninteresting car chase. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the tires Gre- deflate on demand. <laughs> yep. Grico's driving his, his new Lotus Spirit or whatever. A Sprit. A Sprit. I think it's E-Sprit, but I could be wrong. Mm-hmm. E-Sprit. It's not uh, E-Sprit. There's no I. E-S-P-R-I-T. I mean, like, it could be an S-Sprit. I think in I don't French, know. that's the, like, because it's like a spear de corps, you know, would be like, it would be spelt like E-Sprit. But it's a British car. It's not but French. Maybe it's sold in France. I don't care. Either way, I don't know. <laughs> so sorry, he sees sorry this, French people. This attractive blonde lady driving a white sports car, eh. trying to yell at him. She's all right, and he's like, "Hold on, I have to roll the windows down. I don't know how. I have found this whole console for secret gadgets." Question for the table: mm-hmm. Why the hell wouldn't the window c- controls just control the window? I don't know. He tried. He, he did <laughs> try. try. Well, well, okay. He, he was well, trying. he he, he like viciously him. poked at the entire control I think, was, pad. I think he was pressing the directional button for the side mirror. Mm. It was like a D-pad, wasn't mm-hmm. it? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It was, it was a D-pad. Yeah, that's true. It probably was <laughs> the side mirror cuz there's no reason for the, the the window to go left or right. Yeah. <laughs> it was really a four direction well, control no, that, pad. That makes the the win, um the doors go up so like mask <laughs> where it becomes <laughs> a jet. It turns mask. into a jet. Yeah. Be... <laughs> oh, that takes me back. That's some good shit, yo. Except it used to be my He's not wearing his seatbelt, so no. it just pulls him out of the car. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um It did prevent him from being a scrub. Mm-hmm. Because without the windows down, he can't holler out of his ride. That's correct. Wow. But it's his, not his it's best his, friend's ride. Yeah, he's yeah. got to be sitting in his best friend's ride. Otherwise, he's not a scrub. He's not he a scrub. He's car. got a car. He's, he's, well, he's later on, when he, gets, when he gets tranked in the car, he is a scrub at that point. <laughs> he is in the passenger side. Yeah, but that's not his best friend. Uh, it's, it's still his ride. It's, it's still friend. his ride. It's still his ride. That's true. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Um, so... <laughs> Either way, so now this this no no let's <laughs> yes Robert let's dissect more nineties uh, hip hop lyrics. <laughs> Rob, we need I, to fully. You are dangerously close to chasing scrub. waterfalls here. I am. I'm gonna get AIDS. Don't go chasing waterfalls. <laughs> AIDS. All right. Can we continue? Nope. Yes. <laughs> oh, please. So sorry, Margarita Rob is under the chat. Yeah. Ziggisfeld has apparently just been like growling and sitting in his car the whole time. <laughs> he's driving after uh, Corbin here and he's like, my car's got machine guns on it. Pew, pew, pew. And he's shooting at Corbin, who doesn't even know this is happening. No. <laughs> apparently you're unaware if someone is firing yeah. but bullets. By, at by you. dumb luck, he presses the button that flips the spoiler up mm. into a shield. So the, the buttons which are all labeled. He has discovered. He can't well, he read. Keep his he eyes didn't graduate road. high school. That's true. <laughs> so, yeah, the the car has the central console that like folds up from the armrest that has like a, at least a dozen buttons that each have that safety switch to keep you from accidentally pressing them. I'm pretty sure you don't need to depress one of those to open the goddamn windows. No, I'm pretty sure though he flipped all the safeties oh, yeah. up and just started randomly so flipping shit. He does the the spoiler becomes the gun shield. He deploys a parachute mm. and uh that... that immediately cuts itself off mm-hmm. right because that's effective making yeah. it a pointless pair yeah exactly mm-hmm. um which yeah then uh causes ziggafeld to be blind and i think he crashes into a guy on the john yeah wh- yeah that was what <laughs> like a, it was like a outhouse just like yeah, on, yeah, the on the street it and looks like it was a police call box now, and like it was, dude's pissing in a tardis what the hell is well, happening I mean, right now that's that's the difference between you know america and europe is that we have call boxes on the side of the road and they have loos because yeah. that's that's how they do it over there so when i'm I, being so sarcastic i was in paris <laughs> i got that fairly <laughs> recently and i don't remember seeing any of those that doesn't mean they weren't there <laughs> and meanwhile you could just go to anywhere in new york and see someone pissing on a corn <laughs> like funny story with that when, when i was no in london many 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 years ago uh you have to pay to pee like anywhere there like yeah. go, a lot of places in like, Europe are like the that. bathrooms are, are immaculate. Mm-hmm. Sometimes there's even like a guy there taking care of them. Yeah, well, the, mm-hmm. I would but, I would pay to pee if the bathroom yeah. was immaculate. Mm-hmm. Uh, and some of those bathrooms are pretty damn fancy. I don't have to but tip. When you really got to pee, and it's like 
seven at night, which means everything that's not a pub has closed. Um, and no one will let you pee anywhere. Mm-hmm. We're like, all right, we'll do this New York style and just pee on your building. And that's what we ended up doing to use the bathroom. So you didn't wow. go into a pub and pee in the pub? We had to pee right there, and there wasn't a pub. Wow. There's pubs everywhere. You find a pub and you go this pee in the, the pub. the class that we call Galvin. Mm-hmm. Representing America. No, you don't provide me a place to pee. I'm going to make one. Fuck yeah. I didn't pay my taxes for 25 years, which I can actually say now. I figured out the other day um, to, you know, have some European tell me where I can and can't. Well, you figured out how to pay your taxes the other day? Yeah, for 25 years. 25 25 years of back taxes. No, I, I, I am old enough now where I've been paying taxes for 25 years. Oh. So I can make okay. that demand. Like, I didn't pay my taxes and, for 25 years. And your years legacy year. is a sad yellow stain on the side <laughs> of a building in London. That was triumphant. Still there. No. Well, I'll bet. It's probably burned. It's yeah. probably etched in like the alien blood. Acid wash. Some like 300-year-old building. <laughs> took, off, took off a plaque that was there. <laughs> anyway. So... This chase is still going on, and they're still trying to make this joke work. So now he drives past um, the French class is in some tour bus, and they're like, oh, look, it's Michael Corbin. We'll say his entire name. Every time. Every every time. time. Every time we say it. And, um, yeah, everyone's looking, and he, like, goes to, like, the other side of the bus, and Ziggisfeld's back, and, like, long story short. It's stupid. Yeah. (laughs) He first. Yeah arms and fires a missile that blows up some cottage on the side of the road then he it was a chicken coop then he fires a missile out of the exhaust pipe um that's not gonna pass your emissions test no. yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, i mean listen. you will you will pass the emissions testing yeah. i think i've done that at least twice today <laughs> <laughs> that's true <laughs> but then again rob you are not street legal it's no. true <laughs> that's true um i will not pass emissions so Check out this this action packed maneuver. Ziggisfeld sees that a missile has gone under the bus and is coming towards him, and casually opens up the door, puts his bionic hand on the ground <laughs> while like Tokyo drifting the car, such that it pulls him out of the car, and then the missile hits and blows the car up. It's like you couldn't have just turned. Like you yeah, had but, but is this not well? I mean, that wouldn't have been nearly as dramatic. Wouldn't have yeah. been as cool. Plus, also, yeah. this is exactly like that scene in, uh, uh, is it Civil War, where the Winter Soldier like uses his arm to stop that motorbike? I think and, like, so. Turn yeah. It around or whatever. Yeah, but he's cool. Mm. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yes. Yes. So, well, all right. Some people might think that Andy Griffith, Kristen Glover, Hitler Man is cool. Yeah. What people? I don't know. Well, I know. I want you to give names. Not, <laughs> I want you to name. They're not in this room. <laughs> that's for names. Name <laughs> um, he looks like Mister Rogers. But by the standards of this film, like he's one of the more effective people in it. I'll give him that. Um, he is hilarious. That's yeah. He only says one line, and it's fucking gold. <laughs> he does. Yeah, that's true. That's true. He speaks softly and carries a big metal hand. <laughs> I wonder if that's his jack in hand. I. Maybe he's a metal dick. Mm. Would that he was getting after dragged on his belly? By yeah. He was. Hmm. He was. Mm. So either way, Corbin hits. But I, I referred to Brick's stranger proposal earlier in the day. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Stranger proposal. Yeah, he said he, he. You know, it's it's quite a. It's reinvents the the term stranger. Mm-hmm. Well, that's true. Yeah, I actually, suggested I'm about that, it. that it, that would be, it, it would have to have a heating element. That it has a heating element. It has cold. It has but a it, lubricating element. Has, it probably, has eleven. It has a lot of peripheral potential. Yeah, it has can, eleven different vibration settings. Yeah, mm-hmm. you can put all kinds of things on it. He could pro- like if it, if it's the whole wrist. How how far does it go? Is it just the hand or like the? Oh, entire it seemed like it was his whole arm. Like, yeah, it's so at least could, the forearm. Yeah, superpower. Probably get a flashlight situation. Yeah. I don't know. Like stranger you, danger. Like, like if you can get like I don't that no I can't really get the angle right. Like well, maybe it can because it, it'll oh, bend yeah, in all ways yeah. that you bend, need it to. And then yeah. maybe like it, it it releases the deposits out of the elbow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I would be worried about malfunctions. Yeah, that's uh, that's that, a stranger danger. That situation. could double as a shake weight right there. Oh. Like, <laughs> yeah, because you, you, know, you have. You, you don't just get the strength to beat a man in the face with a tray and launch him across a room. <laughs> yeah, I without mean, without working out. Who knows how much? Like, who knows how many deposits he's got? Maybe that's what they were drinking on the yacht. 
Maybe that's oh, how the wine boys was in the picture. Either way, okay. <laughs> it's <laughs> Bionic Crispin Glover jacking off here. Let's think about something else. He, um, <laughs> there is a a switch in the middle of this control panel that causes the wheels on the uh, the um, sports car here to blow their All tires four. out. Now hold on, I, like I, I get it. Yep. Like I understand why that's why yes. is that on the. Why so, is that in the secret console? So though? if somebody like if if a if an enemy like gets a hold of you or whatever mm. gets into your car, you can disable it. Whatever you press know, that as, button and jump out. Yeah, it's like either jump out or like okay, I'm caught, but you can't go to my base or whatever. You can't. Mm. We can't go anywhere. It's a last resort situation. But it should be like it should be a last resort like button. The, the failed high school graduate who can't read changed all four of the tires. It's not going to stop them from where did he long. get them? You four don't need tires. a high I don't school, even know. You don't need a high school education to change a maybe, tire. Maybe he I walked still over. Still don't know how to change a tire. Yeah, maybe he walked over and took them off the blown up car. <laughs> Brick, do you want to, guys? We're going to pause the episode here. We're gonna, John and I'm Joe joking. and I are going to go joking. outside and show Brick how to change a car I'm tire. Joking. I've changed my own oil. I don't believe that you are joking. It's it's been a while. You I've really just unscrew the tire and put and a new breaks. tire on. Yeah. It's really all there is. There are lots of yeah. people out there that can't change a tire. No, I understand that. There's and a lot of those people, people probably who are have education. Change their own tire. It's the it's the type of it's street smarts versus books uh, book smarts. And then there's brick smarts. Yeah, which That's don't totally fall into category. any of those categories. <laughs> all right. So, um. Fix my phone. We cut to a scene of Richard Grieco changing the tires on this thing. Which I apparently totally missed somehow. I did not see. Meanwhile, Ziggisfeld is is hitchhiking and he's just standing on (laughs) the side of the road growling (laughs) with his bionic arm that's on, that's still smoking. smoking. (laughs) But at the same time, you don't see this because it does show him from the back. Mm -hmm. He has a sign that says, I will use my bionic dick sucking arm (laughs) to suck your dick if you give me a ride. He he is still willing to pay the the rules of the road. But yeah, Yeah. he's got two out of the three. (laughs) I mean, honestly, you're like, you know, you only live once. Let's, I don't know what this guy's going to do, but it's going to be interesting. It's more interesting than whatever's on my daily agenda. Let's... He, he's holding and he's willing. Yeah. Let's, let's get him in this car. Stranger this danger. Car. <laughs> so, anyway. Um, now, what are we even doing? We're um, losing. Guys, yeah. go to teespring.com for our... Check out oh. some of our t-shirts. Buy a t-shirt or a sweatshirt and... Sponsor an episode so we don't have to watch garbage like Whoa, this. We'll have, our, we'll have our gas, grass, or metal arm blowjobs. <laughs> Not even metal arm head job. Metal arm blowjobs. <laughs> <laughs> Drinking part here. <laughs> a mouth is getting involved. It's got a flashlight. Yeah, it's got the flashlight. Yeah, it's got the flashlight. Flashlight fingers. Flashlight fingers. <laughs> it's got the it's cum depository in the sh- in the, right. the combat elbow. condoms. Oh. Combat condoms. <laughs> it's got the opener what the for those. F- what are combat? We'll Come get on. to that in a second. Oh, All right. So Fucking we go from that, and that scene was pretty damn bad. Yeah. But we now cut to they all are. For some reason, the poor valedictorian <laughs> is sitting next to the geeky guy uh-huh. that we met earlier, who is shaving in like a McDonald's cup. And like, oh, he sucks so much. Yeah, and, and then she's like, "That's so gross." So he just looks her dead in the eye and drinks some of the shave water from the cup. But to be fair, mm-hmm. it's a European McDonald's cup, so they probably still have McDonald's pizza. Mm-hmm. Well, whatever was in that cup, you would you maybe don't want to drink was, that in the first place. Maybe he was shaving with soda and well, to be like fair, whipped cream. It's a, yeah. it's a no McDonald's. It's like a it. whipped cream. It's yeah, that's true. It's 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 to be full cup. of fucking yeah. whisker. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, now, assuming he's shaving his face, <laughs> this scene got a good laugh at me for just the cheesiness of it. Because now the French club pulls up to um, like a, a road stop just to take a quick piss break, and the driver just goes, "He's like, oh, I'll be in the bathroom, blah blah blah." And walks in, and you just see this like <laughs> janky Billy Club. Not even really hit him, just like like the arm holding it taps his shoulder, and he's like, "Oh," and falls down. And you get this man. That it, it looks like the original bus driver wearing another coat of skin. <laughs> like, this guy looks like he's about to burst out of himself. He's wearing he, a Pierre suit. Like yeah. an Egger suit. He's like, 
My name is Jean Claude. I am new bus driver. <laughs> the class is just like, sure, all right, welcome, Jean. Bonjour, Jean Claude. Do you guys think Spider Man Far hmm? From Home got inspiration for this movie? Uh, I have not seen that movie. It was mm. one that I missed. I'm huh. upset. Mm. Okay. I don't remember a bus driver joke. I remember a scene of bus hijinks with like the killer drones. Oh, there was a bus driver joke. They swapped mm. bus drivers. Ah, uh, okay. And it was a very similar bus stop mm. where he got his night monkey outfit. Uh, I forgot about <laughs> night monkey. Night monkey. What? <laughs> We'll, we'll have to show you that movie, movie even more now. I mean, I enjoyed the film yeah. for what it was. All right. So, yeah, I, mean, I remember liking the movie. I just don't really remember it. But we cut to... <laughs> well, it's because we don't watch good movies for this yeah. podcast. We cut to... Just watch shit like Back at this. Evil Chateau. Yeah. Uh, we're in a massive foundry full of allegedly molten gold that <sighs> looks like toilet water. That it someone looks like lit some toilet three hundred on fire and forty dollars worth of putting. <laughs> Barry <laughs> Levon, get your ass in here. <laughs> oh, the state. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, it, it just it does. It looks like when you like when you're a little dehydrated mm -hmm. and you piss. And then you leave it in the bowl. You forget yeah. to flush. Yep. And like leave Let for that a few hours. for a bit. Yeah. And it just gets even more mellow and yeah. just all around stank. And then like someone tried. Flaming bits in it. Someone instead of flushing <laughs> like lit a match and threw yeah. that in there. And that's the part that's on fire. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so anyway. Okay. So uh, the German chancellor or whatever. The German finance minister is here. His name's Krupp. Um, <laughs> like. I guess. Krupp, historically, uh, they were a very large arms manufacturer that's notorious for using slave labor in World War II to mm. arm the um, Nazis. I okay. Mean, sure. Yeah. So I'm like, sounds, that was an interesting name to pick efficient. there. Sounds um, efficient. So, either way, so this Krupp guy shows up, and I'm like, is, is that is that Eckerd from, um, from Batman? Did anybody check? Is it, actually? I don't know. Or that might have been the dude from... I think he was in Superman four too, as one of like the like I need to know because so if it is, it's also Porkins from Star Wars. Mm -hmm. hmm. um, if it's not, then it's the guy you get when someone's like, "Get me Porkins," <laughs> <laughs> and he's busy. Get me Porkins. <laughs> so it reminded me of the rat dude from Harry Potter, mm, just with redder, redder hair. Um, so we see that they're taking. Ger it was this guy, right? The, that guy? Yeah. Okay, let's see. Um, so they're taking the gold from Germany and other European countries, and they're melting it down, burning away the impurities, which, you know, that's already happened when yep. it was made into he's, gold bars. Yeah, he's not He's not Porkins. Okay. Either way, it's yeah. Porkins-like men. He was in the Santa Claus. I don't um, know why, but... And then they're using liquid nitrogen to cool the gold into sheets and then pressing it. I'm like, that's not how you make coins. And nope. <laughs> what is this is just a, weird are, in general. Joe, are you the Franklin Mint? What if I am? Well, why is it called Franklin? I need you to explain that. I don't know. I just work there, dude. You work there, but you are the... It's a one-man shop. I'm talking out my ass here. Okay. It's, that... <laughs> it's not hard to shoot holes in that. counts the, by the smell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, so okay okay so we're we're getting we don't know his full plan yet but we know it involves like reforming the coinage and like with making his, with his face on it yeah making his own money sure that is not based on anything i'm doing the same thing john does the same thing yeah, well, it's yeah based well, on gold yeah. which nobody's I mean, got their currency i could go so. print out a billion joe bucks that doesn't <laughs> Doesn't mean they're legal tender. Or... I mean, eventually, yeah. probably yes. It yeah. will but those be exactly that. I mean, those I, are actually made out of gold, gold yeah. which has its own intrinsic value. So it's like That's true. I'm giving you gold that happens to have my face on it. You're gonna melt that down and make something else, I guess. <laughs> I mean, I get like so. Finger. I guess yeah. if he gets all of the gold stores mm -hmm. from all of these different countries, but like, I don't. <sighs> I don't understand how he's doing that. I mean, that's basically yeah. the premise of it is that so, they ha the currencies are based on gold in this universe. And but even if they're not, the I mean, even if they're not based on gold, mm -hmm. like just the fact that they like if he if he prints a solid gold piece, it will obviously carry some weight just based on the fact that the yeah. gold will carry weight. It's very heavy. Or carry value rather. 
Not we. No. So, <laughs> yeah. His plan seems to be he's going to form the European Union. And then he's going to introduce sure. the euro, but right. it's just going to have his face and a scorpion on it. Yeah. And As then do. he's going to create a thousand year Reich where he's going to be the leader he of didn't, Europe. Joe, come on. That's but he didn't count fair. on Brexit. He did not. He did no. not count on Brexit. <laughs> or, or Richard Grieco. Or Richard Grieco. Nobody ever counts on Richard Grieco. Right. So <laughs> now, he never follows through. We get this pointless scene where like. The the um Ilsa is like I'm just gonna fucking murder this man with my my whip necklace and Steranko's like no how dare you you know don't you ever countermand me in front of people and she's like, I was just gonna murder the guy like <laughs> I'm sorry I'm doing you a favor yeah. Yeah. it's the same thing I've been doing this entire movie yeah, yeah that's what you pay me for and he she's like I thought and he's like don't think and she's like you hire me to just to not think and kill people like. <laughs> I'm confused. <laughs> She's not allowed to kill him. He's far too interesting. Yeah. But here's the thing. He's German. Is she a hired hand or are they banging? <sighs> I, I don't want to know the answer. I'm sure you do. I do not. No. I'm sure you do. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I, can we go back to talking about the metal hand? You want to know the answer? You want to have seen the footage? <laughs> no. No, I want to. I want to go back to talking about the metal hand, <laughs> the four foot, the metal hand blowjobs. I'll, talk, I'll take that. Let's talk about Areola. Let's move oh, on. Talk we're about getting that. to Areola. Oh. <laughs> it's fucking there go movie. my nipples again. All right, so <laughs> Areola clitoralis. <laughs> fucking Greco. Now he's just driving in his Ferrari or whatever, his his Aspiri or whatever, with it, the windows rolled down. Sees Elsa or not Elsa. Um. Mariska, the the blonde lady that you know tried to run him off the road before, just yells out the window like a like a scrub, if, you know, <laughs> scrub like, but he's not in the passenger That's side. That's true. He is also awesome. driving well, actually, at her. He is kind of a scrub. I'm not gonna lie. He is kind yeah. of a scrub. <laughs> yeah, actually, was he dri- was the steering wheel? Was no, in which... France they drive in the same as America. Okay, right. Really? Okay, all right. It's I did really, ask it's that question. Just Britain was... and like one or two other European countries do that. So, so genuinely, they are driving on the wrong side of the road. Correct. They say the right side because they are on the right. But <laughs> all right. Either way. Well, apparently. Uh-huh. Apparently, my wife can hear me. Is that <laughs> like she's got questions about areola cl- oh. clitoralis? <laughs> <laughs> you can show her later. So anyway, <laughs> I will. I'll show her my areola. So, <laughs> so possibly. Um, they are quite impressive. Most accurate thing said in the movie, like, Grico sees this woman go into this casino. He goes running in there after her. The guy stops him at the door and says, you look like American dog shit. <laughs> Change your clothes. Yeah. Which, so, you know, he does. He remembers he has a tuxedo in the trunk. Mm-hmm. So that cues, like, the, the very, like, low floor Tommy kind of drum solo as he walks into the casino with his... Uh, his new tuxedo not still not wearing a tie which i'm pretty sure you would have to do um either way though depends on how much money you have yeah he goes in there and um he sees the girl and she happens to be playing cards with uh 21 fucking, blackjack because that's what they do in these kinds of yeah, places yeah. with uh starenko here and he just barges in he's like all right i got a hundred thousand dollars let's get in this game um i'll bet half of it immediately unknowingly unknowingly Starenko's just, like just finished a sweaty game of go fish. <laughs> Starenko's like, all right, motherfucker, that's fine. Um, you know, he thinks he has blackjack, but face cards count as zero, so he needs an eight to win. But I'm like, what is his other card? Like, even if it's an ace and that's an eleven, like that's not. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense I at don't all. Know. Who needs an eight? He had two cards. Yeah, I, I'm assuming he had an ace and a face card, which would be right. twenty one normally. The right. ace of face. The ace of face. So wait, so it would be a, a king? Well, like a king, in blackjack, a king would be 10, and the ace would be, could be 1 or 11, so that would be 21. That's why he yelled blackjack. Right. So it had to be a king, because I saw yeah. an ace. He had, a, yeah, he so had, he had an, an ace. ace. So Maybe um, he just needed an 8 to beat their other hands. Yeah, other we don't see all the cards. Okay. Either way, he's like, I need my glasses to see. You know, I wear my sunglasses at night, so... I could spot the drag queens. <laughs> <laughs> wow, yeah. So he uh, turns on the x-ray specs, and he looks at this one okay. lady. Who, Let me just uh, go ahead and grab these real quick. <laughs> she's, uh, 
you know, fairly attractive lady. Her dress disappears. Um, then so he looks over at the this, lady oh, with shit. Pachenko or whatever the fuck his name is. <laughs> Augustus Pachenko. These, these are too small. I can't get them in my mouth. It's, um, yeah, Steranko. The lady Steranko. with Steranko. Um, yeah, I'll take it. I don't care. And then we, <laughs> whatever, uh, whatever works at this he point. He looks over at, Thank he's you. like, wow. And then he looks over at the other end of the table. And it's straight up, it's David Duchovny's character from Twin Peaks, who was an FBI agent that dressed in drag. Well, I guess, I think was trans. I can't tell. I mean, I forget. Either way, like looks real, exactly like, like that. Like real trans or like current day pretend trans? I don't know. Okay. Huh? I don't know what the difference. Either way, Whoa. I don't want to find out what you believe the difference <laughs> to be either. Um, That's right. <laughs> you know, eat that popcorn. Yeah. <laughs> Spill Either up way. that hole. All right. Forget about the x-ray specs. He see, he looks at the card. He sees it is an eight. He's like, all right, it's, bank, it's bet everything. Boom. I win. Whatever. He's like, Staranko, look how big my dick is. And he's like, all right, here's your hotel key. Now I know where you live. Thank you for the popcorn. It was really um, good. You're welcome. More. And he's like, all right, yeah. he introduced himself as Michael Corbin to Storenko. Storenko's like, oh, Michael Corbin, that's the dude we got to watch out for. I'll send my two flunkies to murder him. That's definitely not going to work. I just sent those guys to die. <laughs> Fuck it. I'm going to use my hot chick because he might be vulnerable to a seductive lady. He turns to the lady and uh, what does he call her? Ariola. Her name is Ariola. That's right. Love you. Her name is Nipple. Yep. You're named after, named after tits. And so we're all just like, did that just happen? And then <laughs> cut to outside the casino. He's trying, like, Mariska's in her car, drove off. Um, he's trying to get in his car when the two flunkies catch up to him, point guns at him. And they're like, <laughs> put your arms up, which he does, which fires... <laughs> Like cones of gas out his armpits, Pepe la pit. right yeah. into their faces and knocks them out. And I'm like, that's the only mechanism to trigger that. Like, and it's also not a good mechanism no. to trigger that. It's also where I gave up taking notes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, now, if my you, last <clears throat> note is pit spray defense bo. Now, Rick, if he was at the casino, Rick, he, where'd you get them shits? By the way, big Y. Okay. If he raised his hand at the casino to like hail a waiter to get a drink, would he have fired the yeah, noxious of gas? Course, yeah. Oh, you have to raise both of them at the same time. Oh, okay. Oh, is that it? Right. You yeah, can't yeah. just it's one like, pit. Hands someone. up. All right. Can't yeah. can't stretch. No, no, he can't. Him. Not no, even can't like stretch. Press the cufflink to trigger it. No, just yeah, just both can't your get arms anything up. Off the Fire. Shelf. Yeah. All right, so the guy that calls him dog shit comes over and he's like, what'd you do? He's like, I just did this. <laughs> Raised his arms and gasses that dude. <laughs> and then he drives back to his hotel. Right. And just calls the uh, the fucking, the, the British guy um, who uh, gave him the mission before. He's just like, yeah, I think I killed three dudes. And he's like, ah, don't worry about it. They'll wake up in an hour. I mean, it's pretty, like, it's pretty much the same call I make to Sharon after the work <laughs> shift. I'm like... Sharon, I think I killed three people <laughs> with my body odor. And she's like, it's bad, but not that bad. I'm sure they'll wake up after a while. Speaking of odors, at this point, Corbin does say to the British guy, he's like, the guy's like, what did you expect? This is a dangerous op. And he's like, I expected to be in a hotel room having a farting contest with my roommates. Yeah. It's like, my balls smell bad enough, dude. <laughs> so he's he's taking his shirt off at this point. My best friend told me. The Greco muscles. And he hangs up the phone on this dude. Oh, we learned that they've captured the French teacher. And he's mm -hmm. like, I'll deal with her. No, his muscles so aren't bad. No, no, no. Greek For a 30-year-old man. Yeah, he's... I don't know too many people in high school that had a body like No, because he's definitely a 30-year-old yeah. man. <laughs> so he sits down on the bed and somehow has not noticed fucking areolas here <laughs> wearing this, like, sexy blue lingerie thing. And she, like, comes at him with this bear hug thing and he, like, elbows <laughs> her behind. Yeah, to, like, the edge of the bed. Which if they actually thought he was a secret agent. Mm -hmm. All right. Terrible fucking idea. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Richard Grieco was born in 1965. Yep. So, so 91. In 91. Yeah. Uh, 26. Yeah. Yeah. Not in high school. I Hopefully hope. he's not still in high school yeah. by that age. All right. So now Ariola's working her moves on him. She like, she's doing sticks something. her hand in his pants, pulls him over there. Uh, 
literally just throws him out of his pants after she like unbuttons <laughs> him and drops him around his ankles, just throws him to the other end of the bed. Now, all right. Sensitive question, I know. Mm-hmm. One to ten. What is the hotness level of Ariola? See, Ooh. that's a tough call. Because, all right, I don't want to be rude. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm going to be. Yep. <laughs> you don't want to be, but you you will. I will, and I want to be because <laughs> it's just who I am. Like she, she looks like the type of person that you know is going to have a mustache. Mm-hmm. <laughs> not, not wrong. Later, not yeah. Wrong. Later in life. Not later. Yeah. Like she has to shave. No, I think she, yeah, probably yeah. I, and that detracts from me. Mm-hmm. So the face was not really doing it. Yeah, well, for yeah, me. I wasn't really feeling. It. I was I mean, the the body was good. I'm at like a six. Yeah, I'd, se- I'd be six higher to than seven. Six. six to seven. I'd be like an eight. Okay. Two. Two. <laughs> well, Brick is gay. Nothing, well, yeah, there's just Brick. nothing about her was attractive. You're asexual. I don't. Well, yeah. I we mean, don't, that, that that's, definitely. It's fine. No, it's fine. We don't. <laughs> this is fine. I, I don't, the less we talk about it, the better. <laughs> yeah. um, she. Like, easily, I wouldn't even be like, why are you in my hotel room? I'd be like, okay, we're fucking. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> if you're, you're going to kill me, that's fine. Just I'm a married man, so I'm not going to yeah. say all of that. <laughs> yeah. But, um, uh, you, John, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm right like, I'm right there with Joe. Like, I would say eight. Six to eight. Mm-hmm. Um, seven to eight. Eight. If the boobs are real, eight. Mm-hmm. If they're, you know, artificial. Yeah. Drops it to a seven. They looked like maybe, maybe even real. a six. Mm-hmm. They could have been. I mean, they were kind of like. Right. So, uh, and let me point out eight at that point because she gets, she gets progressively less and less sexy as. Oh this God, goes yeah. On. I'm I'm just talking about like you know like when she when he's were, lying on the bed and she's over him, like that was like eight. Mm-hmm. Too aggressive. Mm-hmm. Kissing on his Calvin Klein, uh, tidy whiteies. Okay, let's move to that. Mm-hmm. Hotness Why? level, hotness level of Calvin Klein tidy whitey. No, no, <laughs> no, because those those cost in definitely the three and at least possibly four digit number. Those are going into the negatives for me. Like, yeah, no, just knowing that those exist. I don't ever want to see a man's dick and balls and some Calvin Klein tidy whiteys. No. Well, thankfully you didn't because they I, like <laughs> they like duct taped his shit down so you couldn't get a boner. During sure, the that's scene. what they yeah. did. <laughs> You can't um, see, but I'm winking. <laughs> yeah, they, no, that's those, what they did. Those were like, uh, like spandexed on there. Like mm. they really seal in the flavor. Yeah, those were unfortunate. <laughs> Either way, I wouldn't want to see that on a woman. Like, I just don't want to. I don't want that to exist. Those, yeah, those are bad underwear. But he's in it for a long time. Either way, so all right, she's on him. She's like putting the kisses on him, kissing down near his uh, his area. She's like, hold on, let me His just areola. <laughs> let me just reach to the side of the bed and get the fucking scorpion. <laughs> yeah, the, close your nice eyes. Box. So yeah. she tells him to close his eyes. Mm-hmm. Now, at this point, his eyes are closed. Mm-hmm. He's laying on the bed. Mm-hmm. Naked except for these Calvin Klein yep. plum huggers. She could grab a knife. Mm-hmm. She could grab a poison vial. Mm-hmm. She could grab a gun. Mm-hmm. She could grab... A pillow. Yeah. A pillow. She could grab a cannon. She could grab a tiger. <laughs> she could grab a... Wheel, wheel the howitzer <laughs> up to the side of the body. A howitzer. And she could, she could input the nuclear codes. So, But instead, she grabs a coffin-shaped dildo tin and, <laughs> grab, and releases... A non-toxic scorpion from it. A slow yeah. non-toxic Yeah, as far as scorpion. I know, there are no scorpions that are, like, going to be anywhere near immediately fatal if they sting you. Well, not only that, but uh, this is a particularly non-fatal yeah. scorpion. You can tell because the, the claws are huge and the, the actual stinger, poison yeah. sack is very mm-hmm. small. Uh, you've been watching your YouTube videos, mm-hmm. huh? No, this is from a childhood I've known this <laughs> shit. Like, I, I used to be fascinated with scorpions. So it would be a Because pain- of Scorponok, huh? No, because cause of sad, <laughs> a sad, sad, awkward child. Well, bottom line is, this thing stings him. It's not like he's it's just going to be like, it's like a bad beast die. thing. Yeah, it's yeah. painful, but he's fine. He's going to yeah. be like, what the fuck are you but, doing to me? But and that's then... kind of like how they always put non-venomous snakes in movies yeah. that are supposed to. It be. would be like, hey, your dick is on fire. Yeah, but there's there's no scorpion out there that's going to be like I'm immediately going to die. Like you'll you'll at least have time to get up, you know, deal with the threat, possibly huh. call uh, someone. 
I, I wonder. Think, I think there's some scorpions mm. that are. Uh, yeah, there are some scorpions that are super poisonous. They're like the, ten step. And type yes, of deal. we're dealing with virtual Greco, Greco here, but I wonder if that's actually a fetish. Huh. What being Scorp- stung like by a scorpion? scorpion plague? Yeah, probably. probably. Yeah. I don't. You're again, welcome. Don't, you're welcome to look it up once let, you leave here. I, yes. <laughs> let me tell you. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. John's yeah. Into Someone John's who has into visited many dark corners of the interwebs. <laughs> yes, it is. Right. Someone who's jerked oh. off to scorpion play. Oh, yeah. no. So anyway, he he just suddenly realizes he's like, I have no idea where this woman's been. I need a rubber. It just launches out of the bed. He's like, Excuse me. The scorpion fires off of him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like legit. So he, yes, he rolls out of bed to one side. <laughs> First of all, the scorpion was crawling up his leg, yep. yeah, bare leg for mm-hmm. a while. Yeah. yeah, now he's like that tickles. Yeah, I, <laughs> I can't think of any sensation a woman has ever performed on me mm-hmm. that felt like a scorpion crawling up my leg. Oh, she never done and, the. the the six figure scorpion for you? Just, this, no. John, no. you know what it's like to be like immersed in a vat of cockroaches and all that. Like you have I like, have felt a scorpion yeah. crawl on. Yeah, me. you you know what everything feels like with creepy <laughs> so crawling. That's it's why like, I'm saying yeah. nothing a woman has ever done to me. Maybe yeah, I the never, don't know the never right the women. Touch of a woman. But <laughs> <laughs> it's always been it a series feel of like creepy a scorpion. Animals. Alyssa, if you're hearing this, this wow. is a challenge to wow. you. Wow. Yeah. You've no. been ducked. Simulate yeah. simulate a scorpion crawling. You've been Doxed and publicly shamed. <laughs> so, um, run, all right, run for the hills. <laughs> the scorpions on the ceiling. This woman clearly saw that happen, right? Um, and she's like looking around the bed sheets and whatnot, going like, "Here, boy," calling it like it's a fucking right. dog. It's, it's just gonna. It's just <laughs> Where gonna did you go? Up. Not yeah. only like it's a dog, but as if she's the only person in the room uh, with the scorpion. Uh, is this her first time killing someone with a scorpion? Probably. Does, does she like not like have a, a next step to like scorpion stings him? Did you just go and leave the scorpion in the room? I think like, we're ignoring. We we're ign- Grunt was like, kill her too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we're ignoring an important fact. Mm-hmm. Her name is Ariola. Oh, I- like what? <laughs> like what are we expecting out of her? Yeah. Like, okay, fair enough. Like, you know. All right. She's Rick, here for one purpose. Let's be honest. Rick brought up a good point though, because it's important to know at this point. Uh, point um augustus told ilsa that over a class a glass of milk that was served in a pitcher in a God. gold chalice he told on her a yacht. on a yacht <laughs> yeah he told her that um he sent Ariola a specialist to take mm-hmm. care of him and she's like you sent your slut <laughs> all right i think i think this needs a so, little bit of a revisit mm-hmm. uh yes the <laughs> main antagonist of this film mm-hmm. and his Girlfriend? I don't, Question mark. His, his goblin monster. Yeah. <laughs> goblin mommy. Goblin mommy. <laughs> Thank you. Rule That's thirty. Also a rule thirty four. Search that on Google. Uh, <laughs> are on a yacht <laughs> with a big pitcher of non refrigerated milk. Yep. Thick milk. Thick. Well, thick white liquid. So cream. Like like creme. Like there's a warlock. Well, about. it's yeah. It's <laughs> it's, it's, it's Europe. <laughs> <laughs> it's Europe, so it's creme. 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 Flem. Big, big goblet of creme. <laughs> Gobs of creme. So he's, it's probably pretty chunky at this point. Gobs. So he's just, <laughs> yeah, so she pours a big glass for him. She says, sip this down, sweetheart. <laughs> gl- 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 <laughs> <laughs> chug, chug. All right, go all right. ahead. Go so ahead. she's like, all right, I'm going to deal with this situation. She immediately walks over to Sigisfeld and tells him that, like, Ariola and Michael Corbin are together at a hotel. Go deal with it. Kill both um, of them. Kill both of them, yeah. So that's that's coming up. So now she's just searching through the bed for the scorpion, which falls off the ceiling and down the back of her dress. Meanwhile... Uh, you you would think somebody who has a scorpion as a pet that mm-hmm. they keep in a pretty box would know how to deal with the pet mm-hmm. when it I'm gets assu- loose. I'm assuming this is her first time actually dealing. Like this was yeah. the the box was handed to her by Augustus. This is like her first yeah. time in public. Scorpions <laughs> are scorpions are his thing. Mm-hmm. She like so she's used to just being on the casting couch. Like he's, yeah. like, he's just handed her this box and be is like she knows just open the box, it'll kill the guy. Yeah, it'll the kill first, him. Whatever. The first time an idiot has ever jumped out of the bed. Yeah. Right. So 
He's in the bathroom looking for a Still giving her a six. He finds a canister of combat condoms. (laughs) What exactly is that? In his French hotel room. There is a just a green shell yeah. case canister. It's like a it says in can. English combat condoms. <laughs> um, so they come in like what looks in like French, a cat it's food tin. Combat condom. <laughs> yeah. The old school kind of cat food tin. Yeah. Not even with the pull tab. Like nope. you gotta get the fucking key. It's like yeah, yeah it's like a yeah. tin of sardines. Yeah. Okay, so these condoms are meant to survive like a barrage. You know, <laughs> they're in, for, in the guess. trenches, I guess. Yes. I mean, you know? he's been in these Calvin Klein tidy whities yeah. There's no barrage going on no. here. I, I can already <laughs> no. tell you that. Sorry, so, buddy. He's trying to get one of these open. And now she's like just gyrating around the room. She hit slams her ass into the stereo, turns on some music, and she's just going like, Ugh! Ugh! <laughs> and at first you're like, okay, maybe she's just really into it. But then by the end, she's like, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it sounds like the freaking Oni uh, Harry Potter videos. Yeah. Like, it sounds like she's trying to take a shit. And there's stop, <laughs> yeah, stop. That easily gets divided in half, if not more, for me when she just looks him in the face. It's just like, <laughs> it's like the turtle having sex. <laughs> <laughs> It's so bad. <laughs> and, and, and it's like, and I think they're trying to play this off like she's orgasming wildly. Yeah, he doesn't know what's he's going on. He's playing it off like that. But it's he's just, not only not like graduated high school, yeah. he's never been it's within the, five I mean, feet of a woman. This appears that she's having a seizure. <laughs> like, it's worse than that. She's I having, think of. She's having an unfortunate, is yeah. all I can say. Like, like she wouldn't. <laughs> She's having a child. She wouldn't just That's drop awful. the straps and just let the whole negligee hit the floor with scorpion well, that, and all. That would be indecent. That would be indecent. <laughs> yeah, we'd yeah. accidentally she see would some areolas in this film. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And, you Can't know, happen there. her nude no. body you know, would distract from the fact that there's a scorpion in the hotel room now. But either way, um, she, she ends up on the bed gyrating around. Um, Michael's still trying to like open up this condom like in like an idiot. Well, in fairness, I mean, who's seen combat condoms before? Right, and also but, he's finished like in a half yeah. hour. Ago. <laughs> well, that, that's been sealed in the tidy whiteies. Like he is starting, he like yeah, he's deal. starting. His body, his skin is starting to burn just mm. because they dried cum all around us. Ziggisfeld. Now he's gone the opposite direction. So like a scorpion is a very like. That's a very specific, like... It's a surgical, stupid yeah, thing. Yeah, exactly. Like, that's way too... Too many things could go wrong um, in the... And it's not high in the effect of this category. Ziggisfeld punches through the door, pulls out the law rocket launcher. Also too many things could go yeah. wrong, <laughs> and but just, on the other end of the scale. Yeah, <laughs> just launches that into the hotel room and <laughs> blows this woman up, blasts Greco... Uh, across the bathroom, like blows the door off the the hinges, and he's like, "Oh, I guess that sucked." And it like the like the rocket launcher. <laughs> so, all right, um, he comes out there and sees uh, sees her on the bed. See, she's wearing like a scorpion locket, and then like the camera pans up, and you see she's like a she didn't get like templed. She got like last crusaded. Like she yeah. picked the wrong yeah. cup. Yeah, <laughs> like. You would. There really wouldn't be a lot left of you if you she got hit by that got, missile. She got Sam Raimied. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she she got Sam Raimied. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, so he's like, okay, I gotta go. Um, finally, put some pants on. Uh, you know, gets dressed, runs out of the hotel, runs to his car. Then we see there's a uh, there's a little tranquilizer dart pistol in there. Oh, you don't know what tranquilizer him. dart. But... And yeah, and he gets knocked out. Yeah. And oh no, you too. Yep. And here begins the power ballad portion yeah. of the film. And you're like, what what the fuck was that scene? <laughs> and why? Um why is this happening? So oh meanwhile, at some point during that craziness, uh the bus driver Jean Claude that's driving the French <laughs> club around, he has to stop because there's a Volkswagen broken down in the road. So he goes over to investigate that. And it's that guy, Kelly, from before. They were like, shut up, Kelly. Sorry, mates. It might be a bumblebee stuck over there. <laughs> Gotta check it out. I right, right, oh. Takes his silence pistol, shoots Jean-Claude. The hat falls onto onto his chest. 
Oh, I'm the bus driver now, ain't it? Yeah, it's, hey, it's, ain't you, it? I'm a bus like, driver. Oh, yeah, Look at no, me, uh, you just driving a fucking bus, mate. Uh, you just stop in a random wooded road and switch bus drivers like the fucking Pony yeah. Express. Like, what is that? And the, and the bus, the bu- everyone on the bus just buys it because yeah. they don't care. They, well, no, they're also half asleep. So. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, that, that's that's happening. Um. Now. Oh, hold on! I'm in the wrong spot in my notes. Too <laughs> yeah, much is going flip on. Flip on there, buddy. Uh, so Michael, he wakes up and uh, oh, okay, no, no, hold on. One scene before then. Now we cut back to the bus. Um, and the the freaking the the creepy guy that was shaving in the McDonald's cup before. <laughs> He's like, he's kissing on the valedictorian sleep and he's giving her some like little pecks on the cheek. So she brushes her hair aside. She smiles. And yeah. Her. Revealing her ear. And he's like, oh, yeah. I'm in. I'm in. Just going to like fucking burrow his tongue in there like a, <laughs> like a call, sandworm. Just a call me Q-tip, baby. Yeah. Having what? said that, ASMR. Yeah. So now... Um, fucking no. the bus screeches to a halt because uh, totally different things. The bus, neither of to which a halt do I approve. Because Ziggisfeld here is just standing in the road and he walks over, uh, and Kelly's like, It's me, it's Kelly. And Ziggisfeld just punches through the window, grabs him, and with one hand throws him just out of the film. Just he's somewhere in the woods, he's gone. Climbs you told on, you to shut up the first time. You didn't listen. Just growls at everyone on the bus and drives <laughs> off. And they're like, fine, sure. Okay. Well, I mean, what are they going to yeah, do? Exactly. Resist that? Well, I mean, it's good they cut the scene before that dude yeah. started fingering that girl. <laughs> <laughs> so now, yeah, God knows what else was going in that ear next. Ugh. Uh, <laughs> uh, do you want to hear the sound of my dick? <laughs> <laughs> so it's a real careless whisper. <laughs> Corbin wakes up just getting slapped. This uh Marishka lady <laughs> just donned her finest French beret and is just slapping the shit out of Richard Grieco. It's weird though, because it doesn't even look like she's trying to slap him. Have you her seen her try and, and like attack him? him? Yeah. Her, her yeah, offense like, is quite limited. Yeah. Something about the way that Maybe the, just the juxtaposition or the camera angle or something. It just looked really weird. It was almost like her hand got cut off in the scene. Yeah, because she weighs 80 pounds and her yeah. hand probably shattered into a thousand pieces when she hit him. <laughs> On contact, Grieco's jawline. Her yeah. Shattered apart. So. And, and that's not, e- that's Richard Grieco. That's not even like the manliest man you can yeah. think of. That's just. Like if. <laughs> If Siegesfeld growled at her, her pelvis would have broken. <laughs> In more ways than one, you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> Drop the um, Now, she's basically, she's she has him in her crazy room. There's just like these <laughs> pictures of Starenko everywhere and like Oh, I didn't even notice those. They might as well have just had that board with like the string that's going from <laughs> through all the thumbtacks. And she's like, "Okay, this guy's actually the bad guy. He's going to make these coins that have a scorpion on them. We got to go stop him." Well, she accuses him of being from intelligence. So yeah. She's She's been through his pack before. He's like, don't worry, I'm an idiot just like you. <laughs> and again, in my head, I'm just like, wait, so he's going to have all these coins. What, what does that mean? Like, is the is Europe going to just accept that as currency? So the more coins you have, the more likely you're going to be able to go into that, that special zone between levels. So you can get even more coins. See, if they were rings, he'd be like, I'm invincible. <laughs> Because you hit me and all the rings fly yeah, out. Like Sonic I don't the Hedgehog. Remember, we are talking about 1991. I don't mm-hmm. know like what the actual the gold backing of currency was. Sure, but I mean, like, okay, you've ago. got a ton of money. No, you've curious. got a ton of money with your face on it. Like, you've stolen the gold from all these countries. But like, well, no, he was he was doing it. He was he had like a two phase plan. He was. Like getting all the gold, he was working on the next phase of his plan before, which was poisoning all the heads of state of all these other. So they would elect him emperor. Sure, 
well, or leader, of the, leader of the EU. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Underpants, I mean, profit. Profit. Exactly. Got, yeah, got it. Got it. You know, yeah. He had a plan. He was just was yeah. getting ahead of himself. Sure. Yeah. Got it. So until 1971 mm-hmm. in the U.S. at least. In 20 fairness, years before. In fairness to this movie, everyone he told his plan to. Except for Ziggisfald, who can who can't say anything, well, was immediately say one thing. yeah was immediately like you are mad. This plan is dumb. Um, this isn't going to work. So anyway, um, now uh, they they decide to form an alliance. They're like, let's go get this Storenko guy. Uh, cue this power ballad. We're gonna drive in my car. It has a car phone. I'm gonna call MI6. And, uh, that is not MI6, but okay. Yeah, what they these movies <laughs> regarding is uh-huh. MI6, yep. and no, tell I... them like Storenko's the bad guy, and and the British guy's like, but you're mad, and then the the lady who's like Q is like, but what if he's not? And then that scene goes nowhere, and you could barely hear it because the power ballad is blasting over the whole thing. <laughs> um, he declines probably because he's, he's operating a motor vehicle. He declines sticking his tongue in in. Marishka's ear, who's asleep. He thinks about Lexa. it. He, th- he thinks about it. Yeah, he's like, he that's on the to-do it. list. <laughs> but he's just like, not right so now. It takes me a half an hour to to unroll these tidy whities off of my yeah. hips. So If she's still asleep when uh, we get to where we got to go, she's getting Yeah, it. I'm banging her in the head. In the head. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, this power ballad. Um, it ain't good. It's, it's A, it's not good. Yeah, it's not good. It's too loud. Mm-hmm. It drowns out any like dialogue in yeah. the film, which is annoying because there's kind of a lot of dialogue mm-hmm. <laughs> during this scene. It's not good, but it's still like I didn't say it's good dialogue. You're not here to listen to a music video. You're yeah, to... right. And it's again, it's not that's good a, music. That's no. a transition between scene song. Mm-hmm. That's not a play during the scene. <laughs> it's not song. even. It's not even. It's like a credits song mm, yeah it's like a i mean i could it's see, like a, i'm doing a favor um, for my brother in law yeah. who's starting a band song. maybe a romance montage yeah. yeah maybe you show the car driving across a few french countryside and then over a cliff. Yeah. Then over a cliff. <laughs> and that is the last note that i took and he's like damn i already used the parachute <laughs> yeah um okay so they arrive at the chateau they see there's a large like paramilitary force there which turns out i think was actually i forget which country it was but it was like a swat team from there Hmm. um were they actually defending a place no they're just just like hired them okay they're like you look like you know what to do with a gun yeah paramilitary in this case uh stands for paraplegic military Mm. (laughs) The way they use the guns, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So yeah, they're un- unable to use their arms or legs. While they're they're observing um, the chateau from far away with binoculars, they see the French class shows up, and it's possibly my favorite moment of the movie. Miss <laughs> um, Grober decides now she's going to go talk to Sigis Bar, mm-hmm. um, and as as Rob put while we were watching, she breaks his vow of silence, complaining to him. <laughs> you want you want to take this one? Um, he tells her to shut up and calls her a bitch. A whiny bitch. A whiny bitch. So at this point, I was like, so is she going to try and like seduce him or no? She just, she just goes full Karen Mm -hmm. on this dude. And he's like, (laughs) he ain't having that. Shut up, you whiny bitch. And then, uh, he doesn't kill her. Like I was expecting, like just take his metal hand and crush her entire skull in one shot. He does shut her up though. He does shut her up. And then they arrive at this chateau, I guess, mm-hmm. where they get put in a giant bird cage. Legit, this giant is giant bird is cage. Well, I will say that yeah. it's just the backside of the high school. <laughs> so the high school with some radar like the, dishes put yeah. on top. The high school was a castle. So at yeah, this point, badass. they're um, like um, Michael and Marishka are climbing like a cliffside, trying to get in here. When mm-hmm. Michael decides to tell her, he's like, "I'm not really a secret agent. I'm like." <laughs> Just a high school French student. Yeah, I just, I'm going to help you. I, I, suck. I haven't graduated yeah. yet. Because my dad always says I don't follow through enough. I'm following through on this. We'll I mean, see it. Really, you should see the tininess of my dick and balls. Yes. <laughs> They're um, not formed yet. Like I don't even have enough balls to sit on them, like B- Mr. Belvedere. So she gives him this look, like the script tells me. I can't me even Mr. Belvedere myself. That I have to accept that you can't Mr. Belvedere yourself. <laughs> 
in it's, reality, it's the worst, she would have just pushed it's them the off the planet. feeling in the world, really. So, <laughs> Knowing you can't, Mr. Belvedere. They so. get... <laughs> They get like two feet. They climb like the first <laughs> cliff, and Ziggsbar is just right there. Just steps on his toes. Mm-hmm. No, no, I'm sorry. He grabs he grabs his mm-hmm. foot. Yeah. It would have been great if he kept climbing, just like grabbed yeah. on, grabbed his balls, just like <laughs> <laughs> um, grabbed onto his belt and pulled himself up. <laughs> so they're captured. And you're like, great, everyone's captured. Just kill them all. We're great. Yeah, roll so credits. kill them all. Roll and credits. That's what Ilsa please. is trying to say Fuck. to Steranko. She's like, just kill them all now. And he's like, no, I want to talk to him. I'm fascinated by him. And why? She's like, she's like, why are you talking? That's why? your tragic. Why? There's nothing here. There's nothing here to talk to. And she's damn right. I can at least appreciate. It's blatantly obvious that they're like, we are going to call this out for all the fucking spy films. Mm-hmm. Just put this in here blatantly. And I'm like, yeah, no, I appreciate that. It's like, I don't understand. Like, are you banging this female gremlin? This little <laughs> boglin monster? Like, why are why are we having this conversation? All right, so what is this relationship? They try to interrogate the French class. And they're like, they just have them in a cage over the, the pee. Like the three-day-old pee <laughs> and that. Yeah, um, they're gonna dunk him into that. Oh yeah, yeah, Ariola. Like, mm-hmm. you know she's got a mustache. <laughs> Imagine the bush on that woman. So, Ilsa definitely has a mustache, but I will give her points for she whips that shit off with the necklace mm-hmm. every day. Oh, Elsa! Oh, I'm not trying to talk about Elsa right now. I'm mm-hmm. not trying to talk about her in any kind of hot you keep, sexual way. You keep bringing up the manging. I talked about Ariola. But yes, they are also big. She, anyway. She's, he's putting his old wrinkly dick right between those mangled teeth. Please. <laughs> We're near the end, Rob. Just, just please. You mean near the... <laughs> please you're turn near on, the, go you're, you're that completely near, near, that. near the climax. Maybe he likes the, the risk because her teeth are like a potato peeler. So, yeah. <laughs> they are. They are. They are peeling his potatoes. Rick, do not encourage him. <laughs> All right. So, it's like Mario Kart. <laughs> Feel Strangles, that banana. Strike goes like, you know, this is the part in my evil plan where I fucking have dinner with the the yeah, spy. Sure. Why he not? Throws him a suit, invite him to dinner. Um before he goes to dinner though, um why I give the actress that played Marisha a bunch of shit is this scene where she's talking to Michael about how he has to kill Starenko at dinner. And then she breaks down and has this like and like flails at him and no line she delivers in this entire scene is at all close to genuine and fair so neither is Grico's. Grico's is terrible too she is a malnourished underfed mm-hmm. scarecrow and her attack on richard Grico is just the attack of a malnourished underfed scarecrow mm-hmm. Like a scarecrow just falling on a person would be more effective. <laughs> yeah, like like if you imagine did. like if Scarlett Johansson attacked mm-hmm. Richard Grieco, she'd probably yeah. punch him in the damn face. Yeah, even though she only weighs like eighty pounds, she would at least get a good hit. Right, in. and it would be way hotter. Yeah, way hotter. Anyway, and maybe a spider would come along and just shoot webbing oh, all over, her all face. over her, right to the wall. <laughs> <laughs> From my windows, your to ass the to the wall. <laughs> Uh, anyway, taking it back. What was that? Eight legged freaks. <laughs> yeah, that was eight legged freaks. That, that was one of the most inappropriate things we watched. But on this so podcast. hot though. At and the same time, we she watched was, a lot of. She was really young, and it's just like thrusting its abdomen while oh, doing God. it. It's just. I'm so hard so just wrong. thinking about it. Um, yeah. So. All right. Now they're having dinner. Right. Um, well, one of them is yeah, having dinner. Fucking, uh, what's his name? Greco donned his finest uh, Armani suit, which he refers to as Avalani or whatever. Abalone. Abalone. Yeah, Abalone yeah, suit. He's like, yeah. tells the guard, he's like, be careful, this is an Avalone suit. And the guard's like, I know. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know that. You little bitch, I know. <laughs> you didn't graduate bitch. from high school either. Okay. Uh, don't talk down to me, bitch. So, immediate flagrant fat chat red card. Man prepares you dinner. It was just a plate. It was just, an empty plate. It no, no, it had dinner. Yeah, there was food, food on, on it. Yep. Yeah, was there? Yep. Uh huh. Yeah. Serves you China made by. Uh, Did it look like good food? I, I didn't go look. Possibly not, but it's still it's food. The China's from Catherine the Great. 
You don't just immediately take the man's dinner. Wait, Catherine Gray, was she the horse banging one? Uh, I mean, that's not true, but yeah, she was accused of that. Okay, so there's probably horse cum all over that food. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Not the part where I said it's not true. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. bypassed. Yeah. Blow right through that door. <laughs> I banged it. <laughs> I banged it. It's true. So, um, yeah, it just smashes the plate around the floor. Just flagrant foul. Storanko's like, that's fine, whatever. I'm going to kill you tonight anyway. I mean, wait, what's the foul here? The, you know, just the take mis- your dinner and just drop it on the floor. Wasted Mis- the mis- good tre- food. Oh, okay, so it's the food mistreatment yeah, and not yeah. the plate mistreatment. No, fuck the plate. Okay, no, I was going to say, because you I'd guys... I'd be upset treat- about the plate, too, because I could start no, a history, no, no, no. and it's, like, it's a fine no, piece these, of No, you people <laughs> <laughs> treat all of my flatware like it's garbage, which... I've never used your flower. It is. I know. We don't allow you to use a flower. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. So there was food yeah, on but I mean, some if sort I, of mush. If I smash this glass I'm holding on the floor, that's like, you know, $5 at Walmart. It, that is. Yeah. Not, that is absolutely a $5 But Walmart if Rob glass. Not a priceless antique. A bottle of Mountain Dew or something. Just pours one out in that glass and hands it to you. You just look him dead in the eye. <laughs> just hold it out and yeah. drop it on the no, floor. No, I mean, you, you don't piss on hospitality. Yeah, that's right. You don't piss a hospitality. That's, that is a red card. You're going to make me tighten my belt. Yeah, Rob could tighten throw you out of his house at that point. <laughs> I've only thrown one person out of the house tonight. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, oh, at this boy. point, Storico tries to explain his plan, and it still doesn't make any damn sense. <laughs> it, it's what we've said. He's going to melt the gold down. He was going to poison all of Europe's leaders with a CIA poison that would kill them at random times over the course of a couple months. Yeah, COVID vaccine. Yeah, and then they would all just be like, okay, Storanko, he's our guy. He's got to lead all of us. We wouldn't just, you know, follow proper secession planning in each country. No, no we just, no. like, whoever, whoever makes the most, yeah. like, bold statement, I guess, that's it. I mean, clearly that's... Whoever has the most gold. Well, whoever yeah. can best the, recreate I mean, I mean, no. the Scrooge McDuck money bin He was the ch- chairman dive. of the, the European bank or something like that. He was the cha- yeah. he was the guy of, of something. Yeah, but that doesn't mean He's like... He's the guy. You get to be... <laughs> guy. It, that means you might be able to be in charge of like the European Union, but like the European Union president doesn't exactly have a lot of no. power. No, no. Either way, um, like I guess this technically worked for Caesar, what? but like... <laughs> You know, the world has changed a bit in 2,000 years. It's like, not going to... Yeah. Caesar, like... Caesar Romero. Okay, the not, Joker. not the chimpanzee. Not, not the Julius Plan Caesar, the, the Roman, the first Roman emperor. Well, it uh, technically he wasn't an emperor. Uh, I was thinking specifically the Plan of the Apes character. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's right where your mind goes. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I, go with, I gotta go with what turns me on. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyway... <laughs> He mentions, like, trying to conquer Europe, like, unite Europe under one banner. And he mentions Napoleon, Hitler, and Alexander the Great. Mm -hmm. Um, And Walt Disney, for some reason. I'll give him Hitler. Napoleon really was just trying to get Europe to stop attacking him all the time. (laughs) And he would conquer shit every time he beat them. Yeah, Hitler, Uh, not not really trying to, not really trying to unite Europe. Well, so I much. mean, he was just, just he one was, part of it. He was trying. Very, he was trying to get rid of the rest of it. Very yeah. specific part. <laughs> one, he wanted to unite mm-hmm. one demographic just one very at the expense of everyone part. else. Mm-hmm. And Alexander the Great. I mean, he started in Greece and Macedon, and then he just went out of Europe. I mean, Turkey's part of Europe now, uh, maybe technically, Allegedly. but like, yeah, Alexander the Great never really conquered much in Europe. Either way, yeah. I don't they, know. they had fun though. History nerd got a history nerd. They had fun learning lessons along the way. Mm-hmm. Making, you know what the 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 best the best lesson was the friends we made along the way. What? All three of those people were not great at making friends. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Genghis Khan was ma- yeah, great at making friends. Mangalo was a cool cool guy. <laughs> All right, it's fun. It's moving fun on. They hung out. <laughs> so, they hang outs. Um, yeah, Genghis Khan was good, really good at making friends. And babies, turns out. Yep. Greco's just friends like, your plan sucks. It's not going to work. Um, and then he's like, you know, the the reason, Stranko's like, the reason why you're not going to stop me. Oh. oh, I'll be right back. So he's like, the reason why your plan isn't going to work is because you don't follow through. Which is exactly what Greco's dad said to him earlier 
mm-hmm. which causes Michael Corbin here to just flip out and like mm-hmm. try to go at him. They shut that shit down, throw him back in the cell. It's like the slightly more physical version of the freak out that she did earlier. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in the, in the cell. It was like um, when Rob was trying to get to the uh, the can of Pringles, to the, to the Pringles and the the Cuban chips, and he was <laughs> trying to get across the table, yeah. but mm-hmm. was getting stuck on his gut. Like, yeah, um, not a threat at all. <laughs> they throw him back in the cell. He's like, "I'm tired of these motherfucking snakes and my motherfucking gold. <laughs> Give me the plastic explosive chewing gum. I got a plan. I'm gonna chew it, ball it up, put it out the keyhole." Um, the asshole guard's going to come over, look for me, step in it. Then while he's stepping around that's, with gum on his foot. That's not what he was trying. That wasn't no. his plan. No, but, but that's what, that's what it turned into. It, you so know, the, it's good that he was able to adapt. The guard steps with the gum on his foot on the paper, which activates the plastic explosive <laughs> gum. Grigo tackles Mariska. And this dude just gets the mother of all hot foot spells. <laughs> For I was what, thinking of that. For yeah. whatever reason, the only thing left of him is his boots. Yeah. <laughs> Those are some good boots. Yeah. Armani. Yeah, the rest of them is just <laughs> blown to hell. And the door gets blown down. No one else hears that. No. Um, and uh, a silencer Corbin's like, <laughs> yeah, looks like he had to step out. Um, and uh, he grabs you at the party. He grabs an Uzi. So now he's armed. And um, we have been given no indication other than he's from somewhere near Detroit that he knows how to use a firearm yeah. or is in any way combat trained. And granted, he doesn't shoot the firearm like he's combat trained. Nope. But, uh, well, I mean, it's 91, so he was a teenager in the mid to late 80s. Yep. I mean, that's it's po- entirely possible he knows how to it's, ha- handle an Uzi. Well, it's also kind an of... An Uzi specifically? <laughs> Uh, those Pistols, were pretty right? popular Pistols, back then. It's pre 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 pre, pre ban. Like. <laughs> yeah, and that was that was pre uh, MP5, so that was the the submachine gun everyone had. Okay, I stand corrected. But um, yeah, so it's kind of a stormtrooper versus red shirt thing because he every time he shoots someone, he empties the entire clip <laughs> just full auto Into spray the air, and he sprays it everywhere. <laughs> and these guards, none of them ever attempt to grab cover. Or do anything tactical. They just kind of stand there mm-hmm. and shoot their guns at nothing. So I if guess they didn't do that. They wouldn't die. Yeah, I guess one bullet out of thirty <laughs> will land. Yeah, um, he just has to reload a lot. Yeah, and is not phased at all by killing people. No, like no, no. Completely untrained high school kid. He, he just blew a man's uh, <laughs> apart with chewing gum, yeah. and then cracked a joke. Yeah, he's Very he's okay with joke. murder. He's in so, superhero mode. Yep. Except he's not very super. Super. So <laughs> he's walking. Pa- he's walking down a hall with Marishka with an Uzi, and you hear what sounds like screeching monkeys. And he's like, <laughs> "That's the French class. We gotta go save them." <laughs> Takes a detour, finds the the room where they're above the alleged gold vat, um, and they're about to be lured into lowered into it. He comes in, shoots like five six people. Um, and then somehow, fi- yeah, the the controller to the cage lowering gets shot. So, of course, that causes the cage to start lowering. Right. The bullet hit right on the button, obviously. Yeah. Oh, it's a video game mechanic. Yeah. You, you just shoot it and it works. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So um, Mariska tells him to use the liquid nitrogen to cool the gold so that the cage, you know, doesn't go into the piss water. And not Mariska so Hardigay, who nope. would be way more interesting and... She would have left this film so hard. <laughs> yeah, definitely hotter. Mm. So better acting. There's um, no like. There are so many reasons I can think of that that was a terrible idea. I'm mm-hmm. using the liquid nitrogen on that. Um, I just I'm just gonna leave it there. Well, yeah. why was it a terrible idea? Because there was exactly enough liquid nitrogen in that, in that container to freeze that gold, and not any of that. I don't think it would have. No, or or have. You know, taken all of the oxygen out of the area that they were breathing. Right, it also wouldn't have frozen the gold. Like, just, yeah, no, I know. Because like, apparently there, I, I assume there was some sort of heating mechanism to keep the gold yeah, well, liquid at that to point. To be fair, it was still liquid underneath the crust. Yeah, sure. So at least yeah. they did that. But 
That is right. not how. <laughs> Let, let's let's put the liquid nitrogen on the side because we're going to get into some even worse science in a second. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I, would we even call it science? No, just, no. or just movies. Chem, it chemi win. It's chemistry, but it's not correct. It's just movie <laughs> shit. It, yeah. it was nominated for awards for a fantasy movie. Yeah. This is true. By no. what? By so, who? I think it was like the Nebula Award or something like mm. that. Which you remember. think would be like I don't know. All right. it sounds nerdy to me. He he gives Miss Grober a, a Uzi. Tells her you are the French teacher. She ties her and her um, her like necktie around her head as uh, like a headband. Yeah. So instead of becoming sexy lady like we expected, mm. she becomes Joan of Fart. <laughs> Ram yes, Rambo Fart. lady. <laughs> Who would have known that she was a sleeper agent? And yeah. That was her trigger word to turn her into a death robot. There so go. she goes storming off to save the European leaders from this poison champagne <laughs> that Starenko specifically said he was not going to do and wait, is now wait. doing. Wait, he didn't say he wasn't? Wasn't he? Because yeah. he, he says to Corbett, he's like, I was just going to poison them and let that be it. But you mm -hmm. forced my hand. And he's like, now they're all going to burn to death in a fire that you caused and I'm mm -hmm. going to frame on you. Mm -hmm. So... Why they're even having the party now? Or... So okay. well, well, I guess gonna, he's going to poison them so that gotta, they just die. Yeah, he's right got to drug okay. them and then Fair probably enough. set fire to the building. Fair would be enough. My assumption checks out. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> Why not? So, either way, like sounds good. He sends Marishka to go, you know, deal with Stranko, and he's like, "I got to fight fucking metal blowjob hand here, who's <laughs> slowly being lowered on a chain from the ceiling. Like, was he up there the whole time?" Um, he comes, he comes Sorry, down and they have to fight on frozen gold and, or just you know, solidified gold. I'll give him this scene starts off and it's not bad because it's like you're having a fist fight over frozen gold. That's a, that's at least a cool idea. I mm -hmm. can see a different movie doing that effect. It worked for Smaug. Yeah. No, that did not, <laughs> that did not work at all. Yeah. Wh what? What? <laughs> That was so fucking painful. That was to watch. the reaction I was looking for. Mm. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> any damn way, he he distracts him with a "Hey, look, your dick's on fire." <laughs> yeah, he literally Which, says, "Your dick's on fire." Like he's like, "Made you look," and just punches this, this guy in the face like six times. Zigzag doesn't care. Yeah, I guess I guess this begs the question: mm -hmm. If someone said to you, "Your dick's on fire," yep, would you? check your dick or would well, you now, immediately know if your dick is here's on the fire? thing though don't forget who it was that he said that to we had previously established he mm. was dragged by a snowmobile on his belly it doesn't Possibly. make, he has thinking, he doesn't make you retarded he might, he might have some kind of like apparatus down well, yeah. there that it could might, have actually malfunctioned it might be a device that's overheating and yeah. he's not sure <laughs> and he's like wait right. that could <laughs> actually be a thing that my I bionic dick is on fire <laughs> <laughs> his eight foot bionic inflatable dick is on fire <laughs> It's so, like the used car salesman thing. Yeah, it's, you know, it's a big <laughs> tube man. Red tube man. Oh, now I'm thinking of that movie Brick showed me, the, the space uh -oh, truckers, uh -oh. where it has, it at one point <laughs> does prominently Let me stop feature you there. <laughs> Charles Dance. Fucking, uh, not Tyrion Lannister, uh, what's his name? Uh, Charles Dance. Charles Dance. He That's was, all you need to know. Yeah, Tywin. Tywin. Tywin Lannister. Fucking trying to the hand. pull the rip card cord to the start hand. his mechanical dick. <laughs> That's trying in a movie to? that he showed. Yeah, well, it well, took him a while to get it going. He had gas power. Yeah, the he had to pull the rip cord. Yeah, yeah. it stalled. stalled. You know, that, that like, doesn't happen. Is that like often. a boy and his dog? Is that kind of that kind it's, of stuff? It's uh, yeah, that in that vein, great, yeah. so to speak. So, so anyway, so glad I. You learned like, all about that. Charles Dance. That was a night. There's better things you Thanks. can be doing right now. Thanks, former people. Anyway. Former people? We're not people to him anymore. <laughs> well, not, not you. No. That was a name to you. Yep. So anyway, uh, now they're fighting. Uh, Ziggsball just like, he's like, bitch, I got a bionic hand. Like, cuts <laughs> his shirt with it, slaps his ass across the gold vat. Now the gold is starting to break apart from impact he keeps smashing it he co he goes to punch down into uh you know uh grico's <coughs> chest grico rolls out of the way so he punches through the crust now he's got a handful of what they're trying to say is molten gold it's like it's honey it's like <laughs> g yellow ghostbusters 2 slime it's maybe cum. it's just yellow it's, cum. Yeah. it is kind of 
Yeah, it's it's not even like gack. It's not even like you know Nickelodeon slime. Yeah. It's just it's cheese dust. Sure. Yeah, he put his hand in a vat of my of Velveeta, my Velveeta <laughs> cheese death. Uh, custom minus the Rotel. Custom love recipe. But it is. But it does. It has the appearance of honey. Like it's yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. It's translucent. Yeah. He turns into Winnie See, the fucking Pooh. Either way, he's like, I'll smear this on you, <laughs> and you'll die very painfully. So, which is pretty much what I said on my wedding yeah. night. <laughs> <laughs> So Corbin grabs a chain, Both of them. <laughs> wraps that around uh, Ziggy's bald's arm, like punches him a couple times. Then the cage falls. He jumps out. Of, he jumps off the vat. The cage falls on Ziggisfeld, drives him into the gold. Mm-hmm. The gold fucking explodes. Yes, yeah, sure. <laughs> like, That's like it exactly does. what like, happens. Just when explodes. Gold is introduced to other metals. Maybe there was some issue with Zygisvald's <laughs> batteries or something. I don't know. Like he's made out of really volatile parts. But um, well, I even mean... even if you drop like a lithium ion car battery in yeah. a vat of gold, I don't see that kind of an explosion it, happening. Yeah. If you drop something with enough moisture, which the human body does have a considerable amount of moisture, mm-hmm. yeah, it'll flash. To it'll steam. flash to steam mm-hmm. and cause a pressure explosion. Sure. But it won't that cause it, be like a big, it won't <laughs> cause a fiery like explosion. A, it wouldn't be yeah. like a well, it would splatter molten gonna, gold everywhere yeah, sure. and steam, I'm but gonna, not collapse but the building. Not, that's yeah, contained. not a fireball. I'm I'm gonna try to conjecture a theory for what happens now. Oh, in that do. <laughs> they were planning to burn the building down, so maybe yes. maybe there's accelerant like spread throughout the building because there's no fucking way. Uh, just one Crispin Glover, one bionic Crispin Glover being immersed in gold should burn a whole fucking chateau down. <laughs> but it sure going. does. There, there were incendiary devices yeah. planted around Flavor the crystals. Yeah, that's the only thing I could think of is they had already started preparing for the arson. So we cut he now. He didn't start the fire. It was always burning. <laughs> <laughs> So, How you doing, Rob? I'm oh, great. <laughs> so good. Um, <laughs> you know that song WAP? I'm pretty much that. Yeah, oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> um, is that the one where there's like there's two whores in the house? It's wet ass pussy. Yeah, it? yeah. That's anyway, me. so classy. Yeah, they um. Classy. So Greco runs me an Emmy from like Grammy. four or five CGI fire bursts. Ducks behind a pillar, Wait, then are goes off. CGI firebursts? Or they, I don't know if they were CGI, but they weren't there. Like he didn't. Yeah. <laughs> those were not going off behind oh, him. Cartoon fire. They were not good. So, all right. He now, like, we cut to the celebration with all the guests and whatnot are there, and like they're about to drink the champagne in what is admittedly a cool like champagne toast pyramid thing, and um. Grober comes in, she like sprays the chandelier with gunfire, which causes it to fall on the champagne. She's like, the bar's closed. The champagne's poisoned. <laughs> <laughs> like, get that Skeksy off like the that. balcony and take that Uzi from her. Uh, and that, that is something we should mention. The insane amount of just wildly spraying gunfire oh yeah mm-hmm. uh, yep uh in every like every scene just yeah anytime that's someone not how you use a, a fully automatic weapon just you just spray it everywhere spray and pray <laughs> i mean you can well, no, i guess anytime anybody pulls the trigger on the uzi they empty the whole clip mm-hmm. sure yeah. whether they need yeah. to or not oh yeah it fires very quickly yeah you can't not mm-hmm. so basically now uh it's like rico it, it, runs in with a <laughs> with a thing of champagne and he like switches the champagne with uh with Starenko mm-hmm. and makes him like drink the toast. So Starenko's like bah, and throws the champagne against the wall. I wanted that to explode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean it might as well have at this point. At which yeah. point everybody is like, oh the jig is up, the champagne mm-hmm. is poison. There's kids in the adult box. It's weird though because they're looking at the champagne like what do you mean it's poison? But they're they're also like who the fuck are you? <laughs> so it's like who would you believe at that point? Yeah, they weren't yeah. totally sold. Yeah. And so yeah. that's why, yeah. you know, Michael goes uh, in there. Yeah, so yeah. Uh. Mariska comes running over and it's like, eh, it is way too early in the 90s for me to be at all useful. <laughs> she points a gun at Steranko. Ilsa's like, nope, takes the whip necklace off, whips the gun out of her hand, and it from flies. Like a mile away. For, yeah, from, 
like a legit like 30 feet away. That it, whip is longer than she is yeah. tall. Oh, yeah, easily. Easily. <laughs> it's well, it's just manufactured yeah. in Wakanda. That's, that's not much doing. And like, either. pulls the gun out of her head. It flies uh, directly across the room, it, right into a guard's hands, who just catches it and is like, no, I got a gun. And it was, it was real smooth. And um, Mershka's sure, just a hostage now, because Steranko pulls out. He's got, like, just a straight-up German Luger. Mm-hmm. And um, they go to the roof to their um, to the helicopter. With, and now, when they get up there, the whole fucking roof's on fire oh, already. Yeah. <laughs> like, the whole chateau's burning down. I'm telling you, that's champions. French teacher, like, sprays her gun in the air, tells everyone to run outside, which, I mean, I would do if she did that. Get the fuck out! Four <laughs> chop sandwiches! <laughs> Oh, gonna fucking die. <laughs> so yeah, on the on the roof for the climactic showdown, they're loading all this gold onto the Starenko copter. <laughs> Stank as, copter. Stank copter. <laughs> as he's on there with like a whole pallet of fucking gold. Um Ilsa and the uh, and Marishka as a hostage. And uh the helicopter ain't going anywhere. Greco runs out, shoots the two guards like they ain't no thing. They're, he's like shooting up at the helicopter. They're shooting back at him. They're like, it's too heavy. Ditch the girl. All like 90 pounds of her. Oops, crack on the floor. Yeah, that didn't. <laughs> that doesn't change anything. So Steranko's going to double down on that. He's like, I'm not going to throw out any gold. Oh, let alone no, definitely not. one of these boxes of gold weighs as much as both of the women in this helicopter together. Snaggle- Did something very similar happen in the Phantom in a boat? Um, I've purged that film. I just, <laughs> I just remember the guy leaning full into a bad CGI skull, yelling, "That's impossible!" <laughs> anyway, uh, which is my reaction to the scene after this one. Just anything, but it, <laughs> yeah, anything in this film. <laughs> which part? The, so we'll, we'll get there. All right. So the helicopter's trying to fly away. Now Steranko's doing his priorities. He's like, my gold that no one is going to use. <laughs> or this woman who's infinitely this loyal 40, to me. 40 pound goblin I have yeah. on this. Yeah. The snaggle tooth monster I yeah. have hidden on board. With here. a Wakanda whip around. Honestly, her neck. I think I could fill the entire space of this helicopter with copies of her and it would still lift <laughs> off fine. Yeah. She doesn't weigh much. She's obviously what's weighing it down. He throws her out of the chopper. She uses her whip thing to catch on to the landing gear and starts climbing back up. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, he's like shooting at Corbin. Corbin's shooting at him. And then uh, at this anybody. point, Elsa gets an Uzi too. And, um, or not Elsa, uh, Mariska. Elsa climbs back up. Now, this is a fucking helicopter. And mm-hmm. they're just having a conversation as she's hanging off the landing gear. Mm-hmm. Never mind that it would be like, <laughs> <laughs> while they're talking. He's, Never mind that you would have been blown off yeah. of that. She's like, you know, who will kill for you? And he's like, you taught me well. And just kicks this, Herb stops her. Kicks, kicks her this. right in the face. Oh, man. And you just see this little... 70-something-year-old woman just go flying off the he helicopter. He kicked her so hard, a puppet popped up. Yeah. yeah. I don't even think it was a puppet. I think it was just green screen. So. It's like a sack body kind of thing. Rather than empty the clip into the helicopter's engine, um, they decide to just shoot out the floor, which causes the gold to start falling out. It was a real underworld situation yeah. Yeah. where they shoot a, a nice, neat hole in the side of the mm-hmm. helicopter. Which Starenko's like, I need my gold. I have to get out of the pilot seat and just hug it all. Yeah, that'll help. <laughs> that'll really yeah. be effective for so, gold. So gravity catches up to him real fast, pulls him through the floor, mm-hmm. and he gets crushed to death by his own money. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're like, okay, he's dead. That's all the bad guys. Not, We're good. It's not nearly as fun as Scrooge McDuck makes it look no. like. No, no. Um, I think they actually proved you can't swing through. Well, you have to unlock the trait. Well, yeah. yeah in I forget who Scrooge McDuck is fighting in w- one of those uh, deathmatch <clears throat> YouTube videos, <laughs> but they determined the strength that he needs to do that to the gold means he would just tear apart whoever he was <laughs> <It's like laughs> fighting. <Thanos>. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, um, the helicopter now is just like I gotta complicate things and comes crashing down. We got complicated and physics. <laughs> I, it started for like a second. I was like, that's actually kind of how a helicopter crashes. Because, you know, it does like twist around the rotor 
spins out of control. And then they're like, oh, wait, this movie. <laughs> yeah. And then the rotor just breaks, like the engine and rotor break off from the copter. Well, just... it stops. Mm-hmm. That's right. It actually stops, comes to a complete stop. And then it's like, wait, no, I still got something left. Yeah. <laughs> it starts chasing our, our heroes across the roof. And then they just <laughs> jump on a green screen out of the way and it explodes somewhere else. So now they're like, all right, how are we going to get down? And Greek goes like, luckily, I have suction cup shoes. Yeah, <laughs> luckily, I suck. Yeah. <laughs> so he's sticking to the walls with the You're suction welcome. cup shoes. And an explosion goes off. And the stunt double is like hanging from a wire harness on the wall. And can't even keep his fucking feet on the wall. <laughs> yeah. So you, you clearly see him take his feet off the wall. And you're like, he would just fall into his death. Mm-hmm. Um, Both of them. Yeah. But that wouldn't be heroic. Nope. So finally, he just like slips a fiver to the editor and just gets put down on the ground. <laughs> but he doesn't because the editor obviously doesn't edit that part out. No, well, that part, no, no. That, that's when he was like, "Fuck it, I can't do this." He's like, like, "All right, are we gonna finish this or what, guys?" The um, that was also when the director was like, "Fuck it, I can't do yeah, this." Yeah, he's just like, "All right, just, just put him on the ground." But while they're fucking around with like these things, actually work. No, mm-hmm. they don't. Um, the freaking uh, gym teacher lady is all like. Oh, he's up on the roof. And then they see the roof on fire. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden he's standing in front of them. And they're like, yeah. oh, you're alive. That's so wonderful, mate. Isn't it? <laughs> Australian. You're just right on it. <laughs> all right. No, so, mate. You're good. You're just alive. And I'm taking it down to the pub. Take it to the lorry. I just a man. <laughs> Public so, house gets you. Use the lift, shine the torch. That's right. Uh, uh, take the trolley down and lift. Uh, uh, and think, uh, Tie up with a Y. Hey there, Gov, not gonna shoot myself. <laughs> in it? <laughs> Put so, a bullet in my brain, in it? Uh, Alright, so. They let they just let them all go. Like the French teacher, they're gonna arrest her. Corbin's like, no, she's cool. She's like, all right, you passed French class, whatever. Somehow, for out of nowhere, the geeky guy is like, oh, he's got his arm around the valedictorian. He's mm-hmm. like, look how cool I am. And like, I guess he just wore her down, or like Brick said, Stockholm syndrome <laughs> set in. Or it's just like. He has the there's, antidote. There's nobody else here. Yeah. I might die. Whatever. She's like, I'll just give in, and then after the class trips over, I'll never talk I'll to this dude But again. here's the thing. Uh-huh. Married to this day. Mm-hmm. They're very yeah. happily together. Just a really great couple. He just tells his kids every day how he, how he met their mother. Just licking just, her ear. Just molested her into yeah. submission. Yeah. But you know what? Really stable relationship. Mm-hmm. You'd be surprised. So, uh, he, dictatorships will have that. Meanwhile, effect. Richard Grieco still raping people. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> he's got his arm around Mariska, who they they've come close to kissing, but they haven't really kissed. He's like, I don't know. I'm gonna, you guys figure out what my next mission is. I'm gonna go on vacation. I'm gonna learn some French. Roll the if looks could kill. Yeah, song. You've somehow punched my back from my front. So yeah. whatever. <laughs> I guess fine. And the movie's over. Yay! Thank yeah. Goodness. Um, we heard like the first opening notes of "If Looks Could Kill," the theme song, and that was enough. Yeah, that was turn, play, turn that was we're done. That was plenty, <laughs> and it govna. Uh, so who's got Rotten Tomatoes? Oh, and it is yeah, Tomato really. scores for this. Yes, yes, with a Y. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Time <Yep>. Ty- Tomatoes? <laughs> e E Tomatoes? Uh, tomatillos? Tomatillos. Yeah, for Cinco de Mayo, for all of our Mexican listeners out there, ah, listen, listening. I in, have the number. Listening oh, in the maybe. parking it lot of Home good. Depot. No. Anybody want to guess? I'm gonna uh, guess probably around forty. Uh, no, no. Okay, John. I have a feeling this is gonna be disappointingly high, so I'll, I'll go with sixty. Nope. I mean, this didn't make it to our critical fail list. Oh, uh, it only. It just barely missed it okay. at 29%. Okay. okay. I, I, I will say at least this movie was rated and performed exactly how it should have been. Fair. Mm-hmm. All the right. audience fair. gave it 50%. 
but okay, that's right. more what I was. I doing. think a lot of those were there just to see Richard Grieco. It's, like, it's a it. thing. I watched a thing. I was able to see a thing. I don't my know. eyes took a thing in, and my brain processed it mostly. When I was eleven or twelve, I watched this several times. I don't know why. Yeah, it just happened. Stockholm you know. syndrome. Yeah. Because uh, kids are stupid. <laughs> yep. So, Brick, do you recommend this film? So, to others? In the past, I've said there are some movies that you could just put on in the background while you're doing something else. I literally did that with this movie, expecting what I got. Um, and it was okay as a background thing. Don't watch it twice. If If you watch it, Make sure there's really nothing else you could be doing that's better. <laughs> it, it's it's just something else will be better to watch on TV if you're just if you still channel channel. Is that, is that a yes or a no in it, mate? Um, no, <laughs> John. Um, I'll say yes. I'll give it a light. Wow. with with other people. Okay. With watching it with you guys, um, yeah, but I'm hilarious. And being able to laugh over it, yeah, was you do the hilarious entertaining. If you don't have a hilarious friend, I don't know what you're gonna I, do. I, yeah, I would not watch this by myself. All right, so I guess it's a slight yes, Joe. Yeah, very light recommend. From the Bo Blasters <laughs> to the rocket launcher <laughs> blowing up the hotel room, this movie's solid fucking gold. <laughs> okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> They're not so solid. Not so solid gold. This, this movie is, right. is a this fucking part of the abyss. Movie is, is molten gold. That part. The rest of the movie is like a three day old bucket of piss. Yeah. <laughs> Warmed up in a foundry. Right. Um, it's so Greco's terrible. Marishka's terrible. I actually for for what they were, I liked the three villains. Like. I would, I'm genuinely terrified of Ilsa and that whip just kicking my ass. Yeah, but she's I like that in every movie her. she's in. Yeah, though. but it works. Was the bad guy the sheriff of Nottingham in Robin Hood Men in Tights? Was that the Which same guy? guy? Uh, it could have been. Probably. I forgot, I've seen that actor. He's in as everything. Other I just yeah. couldn't tell you what. Though. Yeah, he always plays like a haughty bad mm-hmm. guy. And then. Um, you know, I, I, I like probably I can't opposite his name, Muppets but I, was some kind. I like Zigisbald, yeah. The guy with rabies. <laughs> uh, we forgot about that. He's yeah. like, excuse me, have you been checked for rabies? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I guess it might be might be pressuring me into a different answer here. Yeah, so <laughs> there's parts of this movie that are fun. There are parts that got chuckles out of me. Uh, and then there's there's a lot of stuff between them that's not good at all. But I I could see having this on in the background doing something else, or I could legit see a group of friends sitting down watching this and having a good time. It's not a good movie. It is an F. Uh, I would say it's it's kind of closer to me. I think it's closer to the fifty percent than the the twenty nine. But I I could definitely see how it got the twenty nine. Yeah. Um. So. I mean, I can't really, in good conscience, recommend it, but... It's fucking stupid. Yeah, I could see <laughs> some people getting some enjoyment out of this in a group watching it. So is that ultimately a no? That is ultimately well, a no, okay. but it's 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 near the line. Yeah, I'm pretty close to you, I think, in that regard. It's mm-hmm. close to be uh, so bad it's good, but at the same time, it's got, like... Like, there's no reason for this to exist. Nope. Mm-hmm. There are so many movies that do the same kind of thing better. Austin uh, Powers. Or all of the Naked Gun series, mm-hmm. or just anything else, really. Just watch a documentary. I don't Rocky care. and Bullwinkle. <laughs> what? Don't watch that. No. Rocky and Bullwinkle. Oh, God. Not cartoon. the movie. No, no, no. The original cartoon. Oh, okay. the cartoon. Sure. Yeah, yeah watch yeah. the cartoon. Whatever. Whatever you want to do. Fracture Fairy Tales. I don't care. <laughs> um, yeah, this was... Um, it was very much a uh, product of its time, and I did not... It wasn't a good product. It was not a good product. <laughs> You're correct. At least there wasn't any kid power. There was not any kid power. It was pa- slightly well, too I mean, early. For it was it. trying to be kid power, but, but the kid was, was in his mid thirties. Yeah, yeah. Twenty six year old man child power. Yes, yeah. yeah. man child power. Exactly. That is not a good way to start. Um, no. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, ultimately, I think we're not recommending this. Uh, is there anything you want to recommend in in its place? I think we just. 
pick spout a, it off so <laughs> James Bond at random, I guess. Yeah. There's some bad James Bond there are movies. Some real bad James Bond. Yeah. This movie couldn't make up its mind if it wanted to be a James Bond Bond movie or a parody of a yeah, James Yeah, it was like movie. so it ended up I, I a agree James hard. Bond movie. <laughs> yeah, it was like trying to so is trying so hard to be a parody but a cool parody at the same time. Yeah. And it failed at both. Watch Spy Kids. Sp- <laughs> 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 right. How about skip Spy Kids? Just watch anything else by that director. It was like Ferris Bueller's Day Off tried to be James Bond. Okay. Who rolled this film? Do we remember? I think it was me. <laughs> <laughs> he says begrudging. I mean, I think that would normally we'd start the cycle again, right? All right. But then we don't have a Tony today. We don't have a Tony today. Do we have the D20? Here. We do have the D20. If I break, if you want to grab, open that uh, drawer right behind you there and uh, grab the D20 fate out of its hidey hole. Should be in a little... Uh, there you go. That should be the one. Out of its supportive sack. Am I getting to, to do? Uh, are we going to let Brick roll? Uh, I know it's not my turn to roll, so I don't I don't mind if... So be either does. Tony or Brian... Like, so here's the thing. Uh, we have the theme song. Yeah. But... We're missing a lot of parts. Yeah, we're missing a lot of parts. <laughs> Go ahead, Brick. I don't care. Whatever. Oh, boy. That's a ten. ten. That's a ten. All right. Right in the middle. Oh. That's... 1994's The Chase. Mm-hmm. Never heard of it. I, I'm not familiar with that either. I don't it's, know who put it on the list. Um, Brian, Brian did, I think. Brian? Um, Brian and I watched... I know we have watched that movie together and did enjoy it in like 1999 or whatever. Okay. Um, it has a cool soundtrack. Great. It's Charlie Sheen uh, oh, and no. Christy Swanson in oh, good. BMW together. Oh, I've seen Being that. chased by uh, Henry Rollins, Flea, and Anthony Kiedis. <laughs> Come on. And a whole bunch of other people. Why do you do this thing? So it's a music video. Yeah, it is. Ugh. I mean, it's a chase. That's... But, it's but, just... A car chase yeah, forever. Ch- Fury Road, it is not, though. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> yeah. With, like, awkward attempts at car sex. It does have awkward oh. car sex. I can't. Are they doing it while driving? But yes, they are. Seriously? Okay. Yeah. It's been forever since I saw that. Is it, that was a situation of Stockholm well, Syndrome, right? Mobile. Where Charlie Sheen, didn't Charlie Sheen, like, abduct her <laughs> yeah. as, like, a hostage? Yep. Yeah, yeah, and then she falls she, for him. She and, falls, uh, yeah, because... Uh, because he's actually innocent. Yeah. Um, and, you know, she's sympathetic to him. Uh, what is the, I have to be able to actually get the movie. Is, uh, is the thing. Well, go to the DVD store. So go to the, I'll go down to the DVD store. Let me get in my car. Hold on, hold on. Thunk. Sorry, my car's having a hard time starting. Oh, there you go. My badass uh, charger. That's that John starting his Hummer next to Now, week. are you able to find the window the, the window controls? Are you going to fumble around for those? No, I'm no, going to shoot a rocket. It's going to disable the vehicle. <laughs> Fire a couple of rockets. <laughs> oh, no, we can't watch the movie. I disabled the video. All right, guys, I guess vehicle. next episode is going to be the trace. Let's uh, get the hell out of here. <laughs> see what happens. But uh, I want to thank you so much for watching, guys. Uh, I'm Rob. These are the rest of the people. If they sure. uh, Adios. Bye. Or au revoir. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye. Bon appetit. Yeah, bon appetit. Hey everybody, thanks so much for listening. If you enjoyed the episode, please subscribe, and if possible, leave a review. If you have questions, comments, or would like to sponsor an episode, email us at the4ampodcast at gmail.com. And if you want to support the show, you can buy a t-shirt, hoodie, and more at Teespring. Or gain access to exclusive content by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash 4ampodcast. Thanks again for listening. See you next time.